This is the Buzz Adams Morning Show Podcast. Barstool Talk Daily. Except it's really early in the morning and no booze. For the most part. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! Get out of bed, it's the end of your snooze! Don't you wake up! So shower and shave and shine up your shoes! Don't you wake up! We'll play you some music to cure all your blues! Don't you wake up! We'll bring you the weather and traffic and news! Don't you wake up! I am not a morning person. I need my coffee. Who's ready for some Java? Good morning, world. It's a brand new day. I'm ready. TGI. Thursday. Good morning. Sleep well. Good morning, Sleeping Beauty. Morning. I'm um, still sleeping. You know, it's such a beautiful morning. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. And- I want some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I want coffee. What do you want for breakfast? Just coffee. Just coffee. I'll just have coffee, thanks. Caffeine is not a food group. Says you. Says you. You know what else I just realized? What? what? It's so time. Broadcasting throughout West Texas. <laughs> The Buzz Adams Morning Show. Thank you, thank you so much. Good morning. Welcome, everybody, to the show. That's the spirit. Good morning, Nico. Good morning. Good morning, Joanna Barba. Good morning. Uh, Thursday, we're ready to get the show started. Yeah. From our news partners, ABC7, Stephanie Vai is coming by. We'll spend some time in the studio talking about her latest Borderland Crimes podcast. So uh, that's coming up later this morning. Also, Mm -hmm. um, the fire department's calendar has come out for the hot firemen. The the firemen. Yes. (laughs) Are there fire uh, ladies? I guess there are, yeah. No, of course there are. Uh, Okay. All right. <laughs> of course. Uh, I mean, I see way more lady cops than I do lady firefighters, but I, I don't see that many firefighters. And when I do see them, they're usually not fighting a fire. <laughs> they're like at the grocery yeah. store and they're fireman. Very little fires so, during, yeah. during the year. But <laughs> anyways, they are ra- raising money uh, through their, their sexy calendar. Uh, and we're going to have some of the firefighters and uh, Gil Medina come in today. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Which is really weird because Joanna and <laughs> Lisa were like thirst- salivating. salivating like through text messaging last night. It wasn't salivating. This is for a good cause. Yeah, but you guys didn't know yet that they were coming in today. <laughs> no, so I did not know that. That's what was really funny to me. I was reading these text messages between Lisa and Joanna. I know. I like how she sent it in the group chat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was. I wanted to check this out. So the fire chief uh, is a guy who was in, I think, the very first firefighters calendar. Oh, cool. John Killings. So Killings used to come in because he was on the uh, he was on the calendar, the sexy firefighters calendar. Yeah, and now he's the uh, fire chief, and he's a real cool dude. Sweet. We got a good fire chief. He could probably still pose for the calendar. Who knows? Maybe he's on this year. Uh, I, I just had to double check. I thought I heard that. Yeah, so Killings uh, has been the fire chief since 2020, and I first met him. Hot, hottie in chief. Yeah. I got to text Lisa. <laughs> Firemen are coming in. Yeah, see if she needs to drop Actually, by and pick up something. <laughs> yes, Nico. Uh, I, that's why I kind of didn't say anything in the text messages last night either, because I was like, I wonder if Lisa was going to stop There were text by. messages last night? Yes. yes, you started that group chat when it all started with your HBO Max account. <laughs> that was dramatic. And I the only reason I included you, Joanna's yeah, like, I don't, I don't have anything to do with this. I don't, I don't use your I'm HBO like, account. I, I want you to be here to, as a witness. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would I would get off the account, except I set it up. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I, I would have to technically delete our entire HBO Max account. The other account. day, Lisa's like, we need to talk about this because I tried to watch Game of Thrones the other day and I said too many people were watching. I tried to find out if there was a new episode of The Penguin. There is not, by the way. Oh, there's It comes not. out Fridays. 
Is that when it comes out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I couldn't even get on to check on Max because too many people were using the account. Lisa, oh. you got to get mad at her. No, I think I think what we decided was you and your cousin have to have to share an account. We are okay, well, but he's got his own too. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that Lisa couldn't be on at the time, and that's not stopping you from getting on I, either. Yeah, I'm letting Lisa. I told Lisa it was okay. I didn't tell your cousin it was okay, but he didn't know <laughs> that it was mine to he begin has no with. No idea, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Nico and I are going to get along today. I can tell already. We're gonna oh, we're gonna boy. patch things up. All right. But you got to kick your cousin off my HBO Max account <laughs> first, though, before that happens. Okay. Okay, Joanna is going to have the Hollywood Cheese Made coming up in about an hour. I mentioned that uh, Stephanie Vi is coming by from ABC7, but Joanna, what's on the way in our Hollywood report? Hey, remember that Willy Wonka experience in Scotland earlier uh, this year? Yeah. Well, that happened again, except this time in Detroit, and the victims this time were Bridgerton fans. They had a Willy Wonka experience for Bridgerton fans? They had like a Bridgerton experience that many are calling Scammerton. <laughs> Scammerton. All right. That's, I guess, kind of creative. I'll let you know all the details. <laughs> How it included just one single stripper. It A stripper? It. A stripper. Do they have strippers on that show Bridgerton? They kind of had like a... A stripper in one of the episodes, and it was supposed to be like a very provocative party. Isn't this supposed to happen like in the 1820s yes. or something? Yeah, old school stripper. Uh, old school. <laughs> yeah, I remember a few months ago, my mom was like, well, I, I've run out of things to watch, and I'm thinking about watching this Bridgerton. And I thought at the time, not knowing much about it myself, that doesn't sound like a great idea. So I'm now monitoring what my mom watches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how the worm has turned. That is funny. <laughs> You're turning to the man, man. Uh, Nico, we're going to be talking news later. You want to let us know what's coming up on uh, KLAQ News headlines later? Sure, there'll be some news. Okay. Uh, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, just kidding. There's... Well, let me tell you. The, bi the big story is out of New York because it looks like they're about to charge the mayor, Eric Adams, with the crimes that they uh, they charged a bunch of other officials with. I think with. this has been uh, in the cards since those those uh, yeah, but in indictments have been. Now they're doing it. So, right. uh, you know, public corruption, possibly working as an unregistered agent for the country of Turkey, free tickets to the World Cup. In Cotter, at many other things, uh, it looks like the mayor of New York, Eric Adams, that as mayor, his days may be numbered from the direction this is going. But he he was on TV yesterday denying everything and saying that it's all lies. And uh, I'd never heard a, a Democratic mayor of New York City sound so Trumpian in my life than I did when I heard uh, Eric Adams. So that's a big story that's going on. Let's get a look at El Paso weather close to the weekend. No rain in the forecast. No high winds in the forecast. Actually, pretty beautiful. It's going to get warm uh, in the 90s for the most part. Today's sunny, 93. Again, no rain in the forecast. Sunny, 98 tomorrow. So it could, you know, tease getting close to 100 uh, tomorrow. But then for the weekend, mid-90s for high temperatures. Again, we don't have any high winds. We don't have any rain in the forecast. If you're a golfer, that's A plus for the next for the foreseeable future. And the golfer's forecast is brought to you by Painted Dunes Desert Golf Course. You can set up all your tee times and reservations at PaintedDunes.com. That's PaintedDunes.com, or you can call the Pro Shop. Their number is 915-821-2122 for Painted Dunes Desert Golf Course. I guess the uh, haunted houses are opening tomorrow, Woo! Right. so we'll tell you more about that coming up in just a few. We'll have that on the way for you, and uh, we'll get the show started with today in sound clips momentarily. The Daily Calendar. Hey, kiddos, it's September 26th. It's alpaca day for those long-necked, fuzzy beasties that are so cute, alpaca suitcase. Uh, <laughs> well, that just happened. It's alpaca better breakfast suitcase. day, so you better. It's also lumberjack day created so that you could eat waffles. Jeez, I'm getting stuffed just thinking about it. But wait, it's Pancake Day, Dumpling Day, and Key Lime Pie Day. The, tomorrow's going to be the purge. Yeah! Yeah, not that purge. Sorry. And that's your daily calendar. 
Hey, it's Chuck, your host for Loudwire Nights. Tonight at 7, we will rock the borderland with the best rock ever made and the best rock being made. Special guests, birthday and anniversary celebrations, and every night at 10... 2000 a month. Going. Campo del Sol. Grand opening. Eight model homes now open. Visit CampoDelSol.com. Broadcasting from El Paso for El Paso. The Buzz Adams Morning Show on 95.5 KLAQ. Stand by for today in sound clips. I've got all of your pertinent uh, news actualities ready to go in just a moment. Joanna, yeah. Buzz thought I was Lisa again in the text I message can't, conversation I can't. last night. You did it again. Okay, so <laughs> is it possible that you could have dyslexia just with text messages? Like on the written word, I, I'm fine. <laughs> But when it's a text, it just... Did you think Nico was the one sending the thing about the fireman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, he's the one who said, yeah, the firemen are coming in. That's so. why I said it yeah, was... Yeah, but this morning That's he said thing. that, not last night you're in the text. I got to tell you, anything I get in a text, I don't commit to memory the way I would if I got something... You know, in the mail. So I recently got a wedding invitation. And honest to God, it's like I can't see him. It's almost like I'm blind to it. I look at it, it's like, oh, it's a text from a coworker, uh, da, 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 but it's a text, so it can't be that important. You know what I mean? Is anybody and, else like but that? But then later on in the messages, you start like saying, well, Nico's not going in. And we're all like, that wasn't Nico, that was me. That was two nights ago. That's this is nights. last night. And what did you think about last night? Uh, that Nico was telling you guys that the firefighters were coming in because there's a firefighter's cal uh, calendar. I, did, I wasn't even in the text message just last night. Didn't even respond. Okay. Yeah, you didn't even respond. you came None of in you guys did. Lisa you came and I were in having a conversation and with and ourselves. You announced first thing, hey, the firefighters are coming by to talk about their sexy calendar. I did. But All right. I, that's why I said how ironic it was last night for me to be reading these messages between Lisa and Joanna. Oh, had you already also, said the Also, you don't listen necessarily to us when we talk. That's true. <laughs> right now. So, that's not really news to us. You don't listen when we talk. You don't listen when we text. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me get a couple of neckline calls here. Okay. I find it very convenient that the day that the morning, that the morning show has the sexy firefighters coming in, Joanna feels better. <laughs> he goes on time. Well, and Buzz. Well, you're Buzz. <laughs> you're my zesty king. All right, guys. Bye. Did he call you his zesty king? A zesty king. That's what it sounded like to me, for sure. All right, zesty king. What are you, like the Irish spring mascot? <laughs> Cowboys! Today they play the New York Midget. Oh, I mean, uh, the New York Chiquito. Chiquito. Woo! <laughs> Come on, Buzz. Give me a woo! -hoo. Cowboys. Joanna, give me a woo! -hoo. A woo -hoo. Nico. No, I don't want to. Nico. No. Babe. Oh. Uh, woo! <laughs> Nico. Yeah! Woo! We gotta get more W's to get to that Super Bowl bound. Let's go! Woo! <laughs> and this weekend, too. Come on, Miners! Miners! You can do it! I don't you think they're do playing it. this. <laughs> I don't think they're playing this. Let's go, Those Mineros that you tap. Follow the Woo! Dallas, the Miners are not playing this weekend. Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> but go, Miners, anyway. Yeah. Whatever. Well, at least you know they can't lose this weekend. Go study. Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys football. Uh, yes, the Cowboys are playing Thursday night. Now, this means that you're going to see it on Amazon Prime. If you don't have Amazon Prime, at least you can catch our broadcast. KLAQ is the official radio home for Dallas Cowboys football in El Paso, and we will air the game starting at 5 o'clock with the pregame show. Uh, Cowboys football on the queue is brought to you by Bill Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys, 915 Tours, and Border City Ale House. Border City Ale House is the home of the 600 ESPN El Paso Monday night football watch parties. Cap has told us that tonight he's going to be at Speaking Rock and Cowboy great Jay Novacek is going to be in town and at Speaking Rock. You can watch the Cowboys game tonight there. 
uh, and if you if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. But if neither one of those options are for you, you can catch all the action starting at 5 o'clock on 95.5 KLAQ. After the game, uh, we'll join Loudwire Nights, which will already be in progress. Let's get things started. And now, today in Sound Clips. All of the day's news with accompanying sound bites and actualities. Big story out of New York City. Sources revealed last night that New York Mayor Eric Adams has been indicted by a federal grand jury. The indictment will reportedly be unsealed today. But until then, little is known about the charges. A lot of people are making guesses, however, as to what they are based on uh, previous top administrators in city government who have gone down. Adams himself, the mayor, released a video statement last night, vowed to fight the entirely false indictment. Uh, Here's a bit of that interview. It is now my belief that the federal government intends to charge me with crimes. If so... These charges will be entirely false based on lies. Uh, Okay. Well, I mean, that's a blanket statement for for charges that have not been uh, unsealed yet. And considering that four other people in your administration have been indicted already. The mayor uh, of New York City, Eric Adams, also referenced that uh, he thinks it's because he spoke out about immigrants being brought to New York. He said... I stood my ground for you, and I became a target. So they're going to say I gave stuff to Turkey, but that's just because I spoke out against immigrants. I always knew that if I stood my ground for all of you, that I would be a target. And a target I became. Adams accepted the resignation of his police commissioner two weeks ago after federal authorities seized his phones. Others in the administration have had their phones taken over the past few weeks by federal authorities, including New York City Public Schools Chancellor David Banks, his younger brother, Philip, who serves as the deputy mayor for public safety, and first deputy mayor, Sheena Wright. That he, Sheena Wright is the fiancé of David Banks. Uh, mayor Adams' chief legal counsel, Lisa Zornberg, stepped down last week. Uh, a little more from Adams in that video that he released yesterday. The New York City Mayor Eric Adams says that he would request an immediate trial. If I'm charged, I know I am innocent. I will request an immediate trial so the New Yorkers can hear the truth. New Yorkers know my story. They know where I come from. Adams closed his statement by seeming to say that he, he won't step down. But I have been facing these lies for months since I began to speak out for all of you and their investigation started. Yet the city has continued to improve. And uh, Mayor uh, Mayor Eric Adams of New York uh, responded to uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the congresswoman, calling for his resignation. It doesn't sound like... Eric Adams has a ton of respect for AOC. I don't listen to those comments that come from uh, a, you know, just basically a no-show congresswoman. Oh. How is she a no-show congresswoman? Because I see her on TV all the time. (laughs) She's showing up for something. Well, that's not necessarily the job of a congressman. I I, I know, but just as far as TV time, it seems like, you know, she's showing up for at least her TV appearances. Uh, should we continue to do hurricane stories when it's the same time every year and it's basically the same story over and over and over again? And it's places that aren't related to us. Well, it's somebody of, might have a friend in Florida. I, yeah, I guess so, but but yeah, I, it's I, it's almost like reporting on the heat in the summer and the cold in the winter. It's yeah. like is this there's really another news? hurricane, another forest right. fire in California? That that's a good example. Hurricane Helene is barreling toward the Florida Panhandle. So this one is coming up the Gulf side and headed toward, like, Tallahassee. It's what? <laughs> you did the finger movement. <laughs> it's heading up the Gulf side. You go down around the Florida, which is America's flaccid dong. And then as you approach the testicle area and the taint that is ta- Tallahassee. <laughs> right, well, now you can picture it, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Taint and all. Um, taint and all. It is at least a Category 3 hurricane. The storms are moving through the extremely warm Gulf waters. 
Uh, you know why the Gulf waters are so warm? <laughs> this is not a joke, by the way. Why the Gulf why? waters are so warm? Because everybody pees in it? Because the Gulf of Mexico is notoriously shallow. Like, you could go in the Gulf of Mexico out 50 miles into the Gulf of Mexico, and the, the water would still only be 10 feet deep, huh. for instance. Yep, I watched the Weather Channel last night. <laughs> Learned a lot. Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis has urged everyone on the Gulf side of his state to evacuate ahead of the storm. The storm is also expected to impact Georgia. Here is Governor Ron DeSantis stressing how big, uh, although it's not there yet, how big the storm Helene is becoming. This is a really big storm. You're going to see impacts uh, up to 250 miles outside the center of the storm. And uh, six were injured in a bomb explosion at a California courthouse. Authorities say that 20-year-old Nathaniel McGuire allegedly walked into the Santa Maria courthouse in California and tossed a small bag past the weapon screening station. The bag exploded as it hit the floor. Five people were injured in the blast. McGuire was arrested as he was trying to get his car to flee the scene. Uh, here is Santa Barbara County Under Sheriff Craig Bonner talking about the uh, the bombing of the California courthouse yesterday. A single individual entered the facility and threw a bag at the screening station. And Bonner named the suspect and described the circumstances of his arrest. The male suspect has been identified as 20-year-old Nathaniel McGuire of Santa Maria. He was detained outside the courthouse as he tried to enter his red car. All right, a few more clips here for you. As we're making our way through today in sound clips, uh, this might be the greatest sound bike of the week, just because how the guy sounds. It's like they cast the role of this guy talking about two multi-million dollar abandoned mansions in the Hollywood Hills that are now completely covered in graffiti. They had been taken over by squatters. And these were legit, you know, mansions. Uh, one of the mansions had zero graffiti last Friday, but by Monday, it was covered in graffiti. Uh, the Fox affiliate there in L.A. Uh, went to local resident Richard Franklin... Uh, who almost seems like he was provided by central casting. This is a sign of utter decline of a country, city by city by city. It's everywhere. We accept the unacceptable. And if you accept the unacceptable, mankind can get used to anything. We'll be used to this. Nobody's going to stop it. Nobody cares. If you think they care, you're wrong. Does he sound like you should be narrating a nature documentary on the BBC <laughs> or something? Yeah. He's, he's like a Richard Attenborough. Yeah. Or David Attenborough. Uh, he could almost be the villain in a Bond movie. Where's 007? Name? Bond. James Bond. This is a sign of utter decline <laughs> of a country. <laughs> city by city by city. It's everywhere. We accept the unacceptable. And if you accept the unacceptable, mankind can get used to anything. We'll be used to this. Nobody's going to stop it. Nobody cares. If you think they care, you're wrong. Ooh. And, uh... <laughs> Staying in Los Angeles here, a gunman, a gunman is accused of hijacking a Metro bus yesterday in Los Angeles. One person did lose their life in mm. what was about to happen. Uh, he led police on an hour-long chase before the bus was finally stopped by those uh, spikes they put out on the street. Or Keanu Reeves. Yeah, or Keanu Reeves. Well, the thing is, you don't want to stop the bus. You just don't want it to go, is it a below or above what was the plot of that? Speed? Yeah. You don't want it to go below 60 or something. Or whatever, right. Whatever the, the, whatever the speed was, you're, you weren't allowed to go uh, below it. Here's Deputy Chief Donald Graham of the LAPD uh, partially praising the bus driver uh, for his actions during the hijacking. This operator continued to operate the bus in as safe a manner as he could under the circumstances with the police trailing him for an hour before the spike strips finally took effect. Uh, just a couple of other stories here. I, I had not heard about this story before, but a sm snowmobiler who crashed into a 
a parked Black Hawk helicopter was just awarded over $3 million. The federal government was found mostly responsible after a snowmobiler in Massachusetts crashed into the Black Hawk helicopter that was parked on a snowmobile trail and nearly died. Blackhawks are just military aircraft. Like, nobody owns a Blackhawk. Am I, am I right about that? Like, can you own a Blackhawk helicopter? Maybe it's a museum piece. Well, the crash happened back in 2019. It was at night. The driver was speeding and wearing tinted goggles. I guess the smo- snowmobile driver was, was going over the speed. Where do they post the speed limit for snowmobiles? I guess if I live someplace where it snows, maybe they'd have them, right? Yeah. Uh, a judge ruled that the uh, federal government was 60% responsible and gave, awarded the guy $3.3 million. Here is a witness of the event, Peyton Shippey, talking about the accident. I still can't get the sound out of my head of him hitting that. I mean, it was... I didn't see it fully. I was looking down at my phone, but when I heard this sound, I knew that something happened. When we first tried to talk to him, he was kind of foaming at the mouth a little bit, couldn't get his words out. Um, and finally, we got him to talk fully, and he he didn't leave the ground. His, sh- or his arm was pinned up. Oh, mm-hmm. so they just landed in a random trail? I, I, I don't know how the helicopter got there. I presume it landed but who who knows but they put it on a snowmobile the the spot that they landed it or whatever on was on a snowmobile path uh back to florida for another crazy story of course a man was shot and killed after a dispute over a jukebox song at a mexican restaurant apparently somebody got up and said that the guy was not really a mexican and he shouldn't be playing that music here is one of the witnesses breaking down what happened uh, in Florida. One of them uh, played a, a song and, and the Rocola, and, you know, the machine Rocola, and um, and the other guy kind of was pissed off and and sold the guy and say, hey, you know, you're you're not Mexican, you're not real Mexican because you're you're playing that that music, you know. Pulled his weapon and started shooting, the, you know, to the other guy. Oh wow! Guy ended up dying. Oh, my God. Over jukebox music. <laughs> I wonder what he played. El Rey? <laughs> <laughs> no, Ricola. Yeah, what was the Ricola? What was that? Is that a famous song, Joanna? No, I think it's a, like the maybe he was jukebox trying to, brand. Uh, maybe he was trying to say Rick Rolled. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, an Instagrammer was taking dares from fans and he took one fan's advice and gave himself a tattoo on a roller coaster while it was operating. Uh, I bet Steve-O is kicking himself that he didn't think of that one. Uh, It said that it actually came out pretty good. Well, now I gotta see this tattoo. Oh, and he says it hurt. Give yourself a tattoo on a roller coaster. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You didn't finish it. We got to go again. Bro, I can't do that again. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love it, bro. When did you do that? On the roller coaster, just like five minutes ago. (laughs) There's two little boys sitting right in front of him. and he, He got in a wheelchair so he could take his tattoo, I guess his tattoo equipment on the roller coaster. So he pretended to be in a wheelchair. Okay. All right. Yeah, I hate the internet, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it actually came out pretty good. And that is Today in Sound Clips. Find out what's going on. Quirky facts about our region. Urgent things you need to know impacting your drive. And, of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh. Visit westerntech.edu. It started today. Don't give up. Rise up at Western Tech. College for the real world. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Blasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. my life into pieces this is my last resort suffocation no breathing don't give a f- my heart bleeding 
approach and last resort, 95.5 KLAQ El Paso. And uh, I'm going to tell you about the haunted houses, which open tomorrow. Oh. Do you think it's too too early for people to have their Halloween decorations up? No, I think now is the perfect okay. time. All right. Because I've been noticing, and in in my daughter's neighborhood, some people are going bananas. Ooh, I mean, already. Oh, fun. I think I saw like a 12-foot skeleton. <gasps> Skeletons are interesting that they're associated with Halloween. I mean, nobody, nobody's ever made a horror movie about a skeleton going around killing people, have they? <laughs> <laughs> right? When you think about it, I mean, a skeleton's only only scary because it's a dead human, I guess. Yeah. If I saw a skeleton walking towards me, I'd freak out, though. Oh, sure. No, I get that they're scary, but they've never been like a monster in a scary movie or anything. Because, you know, you True. just kick them and uh, they explode, probably. But still... Are you talking about clowns? No, no. skeletons. Oh. Skeletons. <laughs> Why are skeletons considered scary other than... If they were moving at you? Yeah, I told I them. Guess. I'm like, if they were coming at me in the middle of nowhere, then if it's freak so, out. If it's so scary, then why have they never made a movie about a killer skeleton? Remember that scene in Scary Movie 2? No. Where the skeleton is going after Cindy and Brenda's like, Cindy... That's a skeleton. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to tell you more about the oh, haunted Jack houses. Oh, Jack Skellington? Inter- yeah, they made a whole movie about him. Yeah, but that, he's not really scary. I mean, what did he do that was, that was scary? He kidnapped Jack Santa Skeleton Claus. Jack Skellington is Nightmare Before Christmas, right? Yeah. Still haven't seen it. Wow. And that really <laughs> seems to be right in your sweet spot, you know? That's what everyone tells me. <laughs> At this point, I don't even want to watch it. Oh, because of Tim Burton. Yeah. But Tim Burton didn't direct it. In fact, I, I know that Tim Burton it's had from something to do with it. the mind of Tim Burton. Right, right. Well, Tim Burton is now cast a Latina in one of his projects. <gasps> Does that How make it? convenient. Oh, finally. <laughs> uh, last night on Mass Singer. Oh! Uh, leaf Sheep. They're Boy, running out of ideas, they, dude. Got, yeah, there's still plenty of animals they haven't done. Now they're doing stuff like boat. <laughs> and, ship. And, it's ship. Oh, it's ship. I'm and, all in this season. And cell phone. And <laughs> leaf sheep. Leaf sheep. It was a weird costume. Uh, right. Fortunately, the guy didn't have to stay in it for very long, and one of the judges even guessed correctly. Yes, Ken Jong guessed correctly. So, th- so this guy uh, really can't sing well, so nobody's thinking he's a famous singer or even an actor. Like everybody's like, he's got to be an athlete. They narrowed it down to NFL. Well, they some- give like the the whole clues oh, yeah, and everything. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Are you still a fan, Joanna? Okay, I'm all in this season. And yesterday, I was so excited because it was premiering. And I thought it started at 8. And it starts at 7. It started at 7. So I only saw Aww. the ending when they unmasked the Leaf Sheep. Uh, Leaf Sheep was revealed to be Denver Broncos legend John Elway. Oh, spoiler alert to those who wanted to watch it. <coughs> Sorry about that. Today. Here's what you missed if you didn't see it last night. <laughs> God, so it ended up being John Elway. John Elway sounds like a 90-year-old man. He only retired like in 98 or 99. Mm. Uh, KLAQ Haunted Houses of uh, Terror. Yeah, that's right. We have multiple haunted houses of Woo! terror. Uh, they open tomorrow and all through the month of October. We're even going to keep it open after Halloween. It's going to be open until Saturday, November the 2nd. Nice. The KLAQ Haunted Houses of Terror has provided spine-chilling memories for decades. Uh, There are going to be two of them. One is located at Desert Warriors Paintball, 13900 Montana. They don't uh, shoot you with paintballs. So Uh either don't worry about that, (laughs) or if you were hoping they did, they don't. Can you imagine how much more intense that would have been? Like Way more intense. Really intense. My cousin got a job doing it, so he's going to be scaring uh, little kids. God. Oh, cool. Okay, so let me let me tell you. Jumping out and scaring somebody in general is a 
fun thing to do. Uh -huh. But when you get paid to do it and you're at a haunted house, oh my God, it's so much fun. Uh, the other location. Your cousin's going to be coming home with like makeup and stuff. I'm going to be, <gasps> I'll be just like, don't tell me what happened tonight. Because I don't want to be scared. I hate, I you hate do haunted houses. Uh oh. Do, so do we all want to go to the haunted house? We need to take Nico to the haunted house. You already have ones. Yeah, it wasn't as memorable as you're making one. it. Yeah, we got to go out and give it the old Nico test. <laughs> the best were Fernie. I'll you remember first. Fernie going through? Oh, you guys weren't on the show. Trust me, Fernie going through the haunted house was, uh, was hilarious. I've heard. The other location is 2155 Joe Battle. So both, both of our haunted houses are on the east side, but they're both distinct. They both have their own unique blend of s scares. Uh so starting tomorrow, you could come out to either one of those locations, Desert Warriors yeah. Paintball, who are producing the haunted houses, and their location is 13900 Montana, I mean, or they the haunted house of 2155 Joe Battle. They sound fun. Like the Desert idea Warriors of Warriors Paintball? No, no, no. A haunted house is like, the idea of them sounds fun, but I just don't, I don't like seeing all that stuff. All right. So uh, we had casting calls. I, they've got everything cast Although I heard from somebody who got a call as recently as as Tuesday. Uh, so, you know, they're still working to put together the cast. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure they've got it together now. But uh, that is the KLAQ Haunted Houses of Terror. If you want to find out more information, go to KLAQ.com or pop open the KLAQ mobile app. And you can find out more about the Haunted Houses of Terror. Terror. Joanna, here is... Um, here is a service that I thought you might be interested in. Okay. Possibly. Do you dress your pets up for I Halloween? I do, yeah. Uh-huh. They're a little stubborn and don't like to keep the costume on. Yeah. But I get costumes, yeah. Junior has a pizza costume. It's so cute. Oh, I want to see that. How about your new puppy? Um, She is trying to eat the costume I got her. She's going to be a Hershey kiss. <laughs> yeah. And she's trying to eat the costume. Well, it's going to come out as a Hershey kiss. So. <laughs> Let her know chocolate is bad for dogs. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, this might... Do you dress up your dog? No. No, of no. course not. Yeah, it's we do. Dog. I got Sparky a sweater one time. Aw. Uh -huh. yeah. Not a what Halloween about Jack? costume. Uh, Jack, I have like... I have like pajamas for him and stuff. Okay, but no, no yeah. costume. Uh, no. Nah. Well, you need to go to this place. Do you want the perfect Halloween costume for your pet? Then we have the answer. Introducing the new pet costume service. We'll send somebody to your house, tie you up, throw you in the back of a van, drive you to a dark room, and smack you in the legs with a yardstick until you come to your senses and realize how lame it is to dress your animal up in a costume. Ah. The new pet costume service. Because if you want to dress something up, have a kid. Lamo, call now. <laughs> hey, it's Double G. Coming up after the Buzz Adams Morning Show, all at the Home Depot. How America, we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By honoring your sacred vocation of business, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. At Grand Canyon University, our MBA degree program is 100% online with emphases in business analytics and finance to help you reach your goals. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Done. Press about September 26th through October 16th. U.S. OEC store online for details. Visit jdpower.com slash awards for more details. The Buzz Adams Morning Show, Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLEQ and KLEQ HD1, El Paso, a town square media station. Uh, it's close enough to October. It's time to start playing this song. Is it getting, is it getting cold uh, already? Yeah. Or is it just me? Uh, you know, I put on a light sweater, but that's when I come to work. So, yeah, it gets, a, you know, maybe a little chilly in the 60s, possibly. Uh, are you cold right now? Oh, I'm so cold. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Very, very cold. Yeah, it's one of those things where I might put on a light, either sweater or jacket, but it's coming off by the time, you know, the sun's fully up because we're still got up in the 90s. I'm still getting in the pool without any of the heat on, dude. 
Really? You're just still going to the pool. Yeah. And my mom told me she wishes that I would only do that when Nico or somebody else was there. Because she's worried that I'm going to jump in. It's going to be so cold. I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> Please do it when someone's around. Yeah. I told Did my Did your daughter, mom mention me, really? <laughs> Don't get in unless Nico's unless, there. Or someone. <laughs> my daughter thought that was hilarious. That was kind of funny. That is a little funny. Haunted House is open tomorrow, everybody. Hey, uh, Joanna, so we got the yeah. firefighters coming in. The firefighters' uh, thirst trap calendar is out. Sweet. El Paso firefighters showing off uh, the best that uh, the El Paso Fire Department has to offer. And it's mm-hmm. for a good cause. What is the cause? Uh, Joanna's thirst. Yes. <laughs> Something about cancer. I'm trying to quench I'll figure her thirst. It out. Okay. All right. Very good. But we'll find out. We'll and find all out those what? details about the firefighters calendar. Stephanie Valle from ABC7 has a new Borderland Crimes podcast. And, uh a uh, case that was cold for about 30 years, and they finally made an arrest a couple of years ago. Outside my window. So we're going to talk. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Nico has got to leave because he's hosting uh, an event for veterans. The veteran employee luncheon at the county coliseum today. Oh, good. And are you going to be doing some comedy there, emceeing? I'm emceeing, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and doing a little comedy. All right. So uh, Nico's going to take off early. I thought we'd move up news a little bit so we can get that taken okay. care of, Joanna. Wait, did you want Alberto in then? I already asked him to come in. That's why I'm asking. Is he like, do I go in or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought like he was going to come in. I told him yesterday if he would sure. want to come in around okay. 745. D- now you got to clear that with, with Kevin. Did you? Oh. Well, I, I don't know. Jo- Joanna asked <laughs> Joanna asked Alberto to come in before when she's out. What do you mean? Uh, uh, well, I think that Joanna probably clears that with Kevin first. Oh, is that true, uh, Joanna? Yes. Oh, <laughs> of bad. course it is. So sure. Her he just wants to know if he can go back to bed or not. Do, tell him to. Ah, uh, jeez. I mean, we got a we got a full show. Ask him what he wants to do. Would he rather get more sleep or get a little bit of money? Okay. And I and I I assume it's a very little bit of money. <laughs> uh it's up to him. What was there something you were going to bring up Nico? Oh yeah, something about uh the case of P Diddy. We got a call about it in fact. Uh what's the latest? Uh well, his- still on suicide watch? Yes, I believe okay. so and he's still being held uh in uh, county jail right now. Oh man, they must really think this guy's rich enough. If we let him out, he's gonna he's gonna fly to Antarctica or someplace. Um, I was just reading what his what his uh, attorneys said in defense of him and what they they filed. I guess and it's right. kind of interesting. Uh, shitty. Uh, <laughs> Sean did like sh- like stop uh, it. S h i d d y. What? Uh, I was trying to say Sean Diddy, and it came out. Sean, Sean Diddy. I was trying to say Sean Diddy, it came out. <laughs> I heard it. Yeah, I don't think you caught that one, honey. I know, I, I reacted a little too late because I'm trying to text Alberta. Sean Diddy Combs is. Sha Diddy. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. Sha Diddy. Is a music icon. Yeah, he's so, had so many names, he should just call himself Shitty now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is a music icon, self-made entrepreneur, loving family man, and proven philanthropist who has spent the last 30 years building an empire, adoring his children and... A freak-off empire. <laughs> ad- adoring his children and didn't, didn't, working to uplift the black community. Didn't they he ju- is an imperfect person, but he is not a criminal. To his credit, Mr. Combs has been nothing but cooperative with this investigation, and he voluntarily relocated to New York last week in anticipation of these charges. These are the acts of an innocent man with nothing to hide, and he looks forward to clearing his name in court. All right. I got another story having to do with the uh, P. Diddy. God, uh, I'm having some equipment problems over here. One of Diddy's ex-bodyguards says that there are po- politicians on some of those freak off teams. And uh, Suge Knight made some... Isn't Suge Knight in prison? Yeah. Yeah, he's in prison, right? Yeah. Suge Knight made some crazy claims about Diddy involving 
music executives like Russell Simmons, Clive Davis, and Andre Harrell. I'm sorry, Joanna, you're not doing the story in Hollywood Cheese no. are you? So yeah. the Diddy saga gets more interesting by the day. Yeah. I'm already calling it Diddy did not kill himself. But uh, I remember there was a time not too long ago when um, people were saying, hey, these uh, Hollywood celebrities are having these wild sex parties and there's drugs everywhere and children are involved. Everyone thought that, oh, those are just conspiracy theories. You're dumb. Wait, wait a second. People have sex parties all the time. Yeah, nobody's saying sex parties don't happen. <clears throat> right. It's whether people were, were doing them willingly or against their will. Also, were they being recorded with their knowledge or I, without what he's their knowledge? Saying, what he's saying is yeah, that... He's basically saying all the... the Pizza Pizzagate. Pop, Pizzagate stuff must be true. Right. And that's such a dumb comparison. There is not like an evil cabal of people who are having like 10 year old children uh, being tortured Didn't, for their adrenochrome. Right. I think, who is this? Do you I recognize this name? <laughs> yeah. Who is this? Yeah, right. Uh, mm. It's weird how the conspiracy theorists are always right. No, they're not. No, they're not. What? They're hardly ever right. I mean, you can count on one hand the ni- the number of times a conspiracy theory has turned out to be true. Uh, and the media just always lies. No, 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 no. You've got it backwards. Conspiracy theories are usually crackpot. The media, for the, the most part, does not lie. The, cra- the crackpots are the liars. And for the most part, the media does a conscientious job about uncovering the truth. So, I mean, you may be right that uh, Diddy was involved in some nefarious going is on. That's why they'll have a trial, you know, and 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 they'll bring all this to light and they'll have witnesses and documentation and things like that. Other than conspiracy theorists are always right. And there might have been underage girls or or I don't know if they're underage men at those parties, but that's a far cry from what the conspiracy theorists say happened in the pizza gate well that it's you know uh like high ranking democratic officials i'm interested to know if there are any politicians well, yeah, on I mean, these freak off tapes yeah, they mean, there might be but, but it's not it's a little premature to start saying conspiracy theorists were right all along yeah adrenochrome they're torturing the kids uh yeah let's go ahead and get to the hollywood cheese man Derek, uh, our email writer, is convinced that Diddy had something to do with killing Biggie. <laughs> so, oh, he totally did. Like, he's really on board <laughs> totally with Diddy did. being involved with killing... Uh, Speaking of conspiracy Biggie. theories. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and get to our Mo Show uh, Entertainment Hollywood sir. Cheese May. That's what okay. I want to do. That's exactly what I want to do. It's the Hollywood Cheese May. It's the Hollywood Cheese May. Joanna, tell us more. Good morning, Joanna Barba. <laughs> Good morning. The biggest R-rated film in history is about to make its way into homes around the world. Deadpool and Wolverine will be available for home viewing through digital on October 1st. Did and you just call it the biggest movie in history? The biggest R-rated oh, film okay. in history. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Pay it. To, God, you really don't pay attention. Uh, it'll be available for home viewing on, on digital on October 1st and 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray and DVD on October 22nd. Both the digital and hard copy versions will have a variety of bonus features and deleted scenes. The movie was the second biggest film of 2024, trailing only behind Inside Out Inside 2. Inside Out 2. That's on which Disney Which is now Plus, on Disney Plus. Yeah, it's taking, t- it took in almost $628 million in the States and $690 million everywhere else for a total box office of over $1.3 billion. I guess Whoa. people are still buying DVDs and Blu-ray and 4K yeah, right? and all that stuff. You talk to God. me when it comes available for free on streaming somewhere. <laughs> that's about, I mean, that sounds like somebody going out and buying a bunch of stamps. I mean, it just I don't sounds know, really man. old-fashioned. Because right now I'm going to talk about this Disney Plus password crackdown sharing. They have one more price hike before I bust out that DVD player. Mm. And I am done with all the streaming. Oh, I'm thinking of getting rid of, of uh, or getting, yeah, getting off of HBO Max because Buzz is bitching about it so much. Uh, I know. You do seem to be bitching a lot about the HBO Max. I, I, 
I'm the one who pays for it. I shouldn't go on and find <laughs> out that I can't watch it because there are too many users. So then have a chat and be like, hey, one of you needs to get off so I could watch this as the payer and of this. I'm oh, the one who had that chat. No, I'm the one who set it up. So it's in my name and, and passwords and everything. So it. And Lisa is named the what on there? Leech. <laughs> so Buzz couldn't, like, if I canceled mine right now, then the whole thing would be off and Buzz would have to figure out how to re-sign up for it. The whole thing tumbles okay. if Nico's gone. If I'm, if I, then, then you're more than welcome to set your own HBO max up. <sighs> All right, fine. You can stay on, but Drew's got to go. <laughs> Everyone wants your poor cousin knocked off the island. What? Uh, uh, no. Because I'm just going to get off. I'm just going to cancel it and then get my own. Good. And all right. But then you but set, don't, up, uh, don't. Set, set up your own HBO Max then. You know what? I can find somebody else under the age of 40 that knows how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You I can. get my daughter to do it probably. Yeah, yeah, you yeah could. your daughter could probably do Man. it. <laughs> Buzz, I can't believe you can't set up your. You can if you tried. I don't know, Joanna, honestly. <laughs> I believe he can. I've been with him where he gets so frustrated. And, and like, <laughs> like you know how you would have to go use your QR code uh, on the you know, TV to set it up? Just the amount of how frustrated I get when I'm trying to teach my mom how to do it, mm -hmm. I can picture already how bad it'll be with Buzz. Just do it yourself. That's what he'll say. All right, sorry we interrupted you. Oh, no, no, the reason no. I brought that up yeah. was because I do want to get a new uh, HBO Max subscription. Weren't you doing that thing where you take off a subscription one yes. month and then the next month a different but one? But HBO, Hulu, and Disney Plus are coming <gasps> in a... That's right. It keeps trying to get me to bundle. It's coming in a bundle of for $16 for all three of them, and that's like uh, I, yeah, I think a third it's of the like price of each. Less, yeah. So I think I might just Buzz. Oh. No, Nico will do it himself. He doesn't need your HBO Max. Then. Yeah, just don't... I don't, don't need. No, don't, I don't shut need mine down. Yeah, I'm the one who set it up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't shut it down. If I get off of it, then you, it's automatically shut down because it's my. It's essentially my account. I pay. I get the bill. You're for the it. only one. Yeah, you pay for it. <laughs> but I'm the one. You're set just it up. the sucker paying for it. Okay. And then I like how you put me in the group chat, and I'm all. I don't use your HBO Max. Yeah, Joanna's the angel. Uh, yeah. Well, you've got to be a, uh, a witness <laughs> of this insanity that he's trying to push. What insanity? That you, that. I think he's just mad that your cousin's on it. <laughs> no, I'm not mad. I just, I, and I'm not even that mad because there was a new episode of Penguin anyway, I found out. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't let me in because you and your cousin were on it. All right. Just and to, Lisa at the and same Lisa. time. Just right. to prevent any future conversation like this or BS that might come out, just, I'm going to shut it down. Okay, but don't shut down my part. Yep. If I shut mine down, the part as, down, yours gets shut as, down. Too. Yours goes down with as them. As a sign of how much you appreciate me letting you share my HBO Max for a couple of years, <laughs> do this thing for me. So then I would stay on it the whole time. So either you get rid of Lisa. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh you want to throw Lisa under the bus. Well, she's not either paying for it or set it up in her name. Yeah, but when she worked with me, she was on time all the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Boys. <laughs> Boys. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Joanna. More Hollywood cheese. You know what? Please. I'm doing it right now. I'm canceling it right now. Disney Plus has officially Put launched. Put your phone down. <laughs> no. Nope. Don't gonna, cancel you're, it. If you're going to be like this, if you're going to be like this. A new penguin comes up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, comes up you know tomorrow. what? Derek said he'll set me up. He knows how to all do right, all that good. stuff. So, so put your phone down. No. You're, you're going to be like this. <laughs> oh, God. Stop it, boy. I'm dying. Disney Plus has officially launched its password sharing crackdown by rolling out a paid sharing program. Much like Netflix, Disney Plus has classified any user outside of a designated household as an extra member who can be added to plans for additional charge. Only one extra member slot will be available per account and it will not be available for the Disney Bundle subscribers. For those with the Disney Plus... Disney Plus, <laughs> Disney Plus basic <laughs> subscription. This extra member will cost six ninety nine more per month, while those with the Disney Plus premium plans will have to pony up an additional nine ninety nine per month. Uh -huh. The paid sharing program comes just as Disney Plus is also set to raise prices on its plans next month. I'm telling you, busting out that DVD player. Hey, Buzz, you paying for some of those accounts um, and not having control? Sounds like a sugar daddy relationship. <laughs> it's not a sugar. We find more and more about your guys' relationship here every day. Have a good one.
Okay, but you're totally ignoring that Lisa Sanchez is also on my HBO. Uh, yeah, I'm the only idiot not on it. <laughs> hey, all this bickering about the HBO Max, it's reminding me of an episode of Divorce Court. <laughs> Don't fight, guys. Who gets to keep Kathy in the end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who gets custody of Cousin Drew? <laughs> That's hilarious. Brittany Furlan Lee is willing... <laughs> Sorry. Do you have more calls? No, that was the last one. Brittany Furlan Lee is willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a wild animal to protect her fur babies. The comedian who is married to Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee shared a video of the frightening encounter to Instagram on Tuesday, showing off her bold response to a coyote snatching the couple's dock shound. Dock dock, like a wiener dog. Like a wiener dog. Out That's of their kind of backyard. To kind of ironic that Tommy Lee would have a wiener dog. Huh? <laughs> It took it right out of their backyard in the middle of the oh, day. Oh, I read a little. I read the story. It didn't get it out of the backyard. Apparently, the the Dachshund is carrying it's a too little. Fat. It was too fat. Yes. <laughs> the coyote Perlin the captioned room. the video. <laughs> Perlin captioned the video saying, "Nina is safe. I climbed up the wall and grabbed her out of its mouth." Thank God she's a little bit fat because he couldn't make it over the wall with her. Mm -hmm. Nina is the 10-year-old dog that was just grabbed by a coyote. She went on to explain that the incident occurred in broad daylight and cautioned other hey, California residents. You mean his wiener's too fat? <laughs> <laughs> Buzz, this morning, Buzz this morning asked me, wait, who's Brittany Ferlin? And I'm all, uh, oh, Tommy she, Lee's wife. You saw she her boobs. She flashed yeah. her boobs at us at the Motley Crue concert. And they were nice. The rest of the story was she had to come out because Tommy Lee was too disappointed with the El Paso women flashing their boobs. Right. There weren't enough of them. And nobody some of was them, really, nobody wanted to see. Some uh, of but them But then Brittany were, Furlong came out. Right. And flashed the crowd at the Motley Crue show last year. We all saw her boobs. Uh -huh. It was the first time I think I've ever been to a concert where I've seen one of the members' penises. And oh. then I saw his wife's boobs. So. Oh, you get a little of each. Did Tommy Lee show his penis at the concert? Not at the concert. Because oh. I must have but been I've seen in it on the internet. Oh, oh, you see. know what? That's true. That would be a crime if you showed his penis at the concert, right? If they arrested what? Jim Morrison for that, but that was like 50 years ago. But so. she can show her boobs on stage? Hey, Buzz, you paying for Oh, God. You're playing the <laughs> Did same you way? accidentally lean on the... <laughs> Your tummy got it, didn't no, it? No, no, no. There, there are a lot of technical issues that I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> Finally. Lot. Bridgerton fans in Detroit are fuming after an expensive, immersive event failed to make their Regency-era dreams come true. On Sunday, attendees of an unauthorized Bridgerton-themed event took to social media with a bunch of complaints about the experience that touted itself as a chance for fans to, quote, step into the enchanting world of the hit Netflix series for an evening of sophistication, grace, and historical charm. Tickets for the Detroit Bridgerton-themed experience, which ranged from $150 to $1,000, depending on the package purchased, came with the promise of a full ball experience, including a night of dancing, live entertainment, exquisite refreshments, and enchanting surprises, as well as a chance to win $2,000 in cash for being named the diamond of the season, aka the best dressed attendee. However, those who showed up dressed to the nines in their Br Bridgerton best were greeted by a bare bones event that did not deliver on said promises. Disgruntled ex and TikTok users said that there was no cash prize at all, no alcohol, and not even enough chairs for people to sit. As for the entertainment, there was a single violin player and one stripper, according <laughs> to the stripper. attendees. With one single poll, the or organizers issued an a statement acknowledging that, quote, not everyone had the experience that they anticipated at their event. They added that they're working diligently to address all concerns and will be reaching out with further details shortly. Oh, yeah. It looks like a sad, empty It's the new Willy Wonka, Wonka experience. Oh, my God. But it does look like the, <laughs> the people who love Bridgerton, they... The, they really the, dressed up. The Detroit people that attended and paid upwards of $1,000, they really did a good job. Do you want to hear one of the attendees sure. describing what the, the event was actually yeah. like? Um, where it went wrong was the lack of structure and just for the amount that people paid to be there, trash, trash. <laughs> we paid um, for the three of us roughly almost $600. Um, and that was for VIP. That was for like all the things that didn't include carriage rides. Uh -huh. That didn't include all of the other stuff that 
apparently was supposed to happen. And none of that happened. Carriage they, rides? They didn't have the prize that they said for the costume. They did prize. not. Oh, God. <laughs> well, with your entertainment news, I'm Joanna Barba. Did you hear? Summer's already over. Summer, you're fired. Autumn, you're hot. Check eligibility and vaccine at vaxassist.com. <laughs> so where should we go next? Sponsored by Pfizer. Oh, we're back. Buzz is back. Hey, right on, Buzz. Buzz in the morning show, 95.5 The Q. Coming up later, Stephanie Valle from our partner station, uh, excuse me, our news partners. <laughs> at, <laughs> you were going to say 600 years ago. Yeah, I, I was. KVIA 7. So she's got a new Borderland Crimes podcast, which is really excellent. Like award winning. It is. Stuff it won an um, Edward Murrow Award this year. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, a case that had gone cold for about 30 years. They finally made an arrest in this triple murder that happened in El Paso in 1994. So uh, Stephanie Vi is coming by. Also, uh, Gilbert from El Paso FD mm -hmm. is going to tell us about the firefighters' 2025 calendar. Beefcake calendar. Yeah, sexy. And you're right, because I, I know a lot of female firefighters. and Oh, you do? Yeah, I know there's a, there's a bunch, and uh, I wonder if they do their own calendar. I've yeah, never right, heard of they that. Should. All right. I mean, really, the only way that you could do a calendar these days, if if you're dude or an old lady, like old ladies, right, put out calendars, and people snatch those up. Aww. And no, oops, that's not right. <laughs> 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 Let's get into uh, new things. And uh, Nico and Jimmy, and with today's top stories, we're going a little bit early today because Nico has to go host a veterans event. A veterans luncheon, yeah. And actually, I just thought about it. So I don't want my cousin to feel like a, a left out and have to use my account. So I, I you know, I'm going to get my own and I'm going to set Buzz up with a new account. Good. Thank you. But Aww. but then Lisa's not going to have passwords to either of ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'll give Lisa a, pa a password. Oh, there me. you go. Okay. Oh, Buzz and Nico, you guys worked it out. That's I'm so right. Happy for you. I'm not going to help you anymore. <laughs> Sharing is caring. <laughs> you got a good deal. You got free HBO Max for like two years. That's a good deal, right? Dude, sure, whatever. If if you think that I, all the help that I've given you over the years is not what, worth that that much stuff, what's on sure. HBO Max that you and you or Drew are watching so much of? Is there something right now you're I'm watching? I'm watching West Wing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what? Lisa's watching Game of Thrones, and I'm trying to watch Penguin. <laughs> But there isn't even a new one until tomorrow. Like I helped you set it all up. Lisa didn't help anything. So what? Where's where's her credit for this? I just you know I appreciate I Lisa and she asked. She asked me. She didn't ask you. Okay, listen. Here's how good this penguin no, show but, is. But, but <laughs> let, let me tell you something. Joanna's right. Every day You're scared I'm scared of Lisa. He's a little scared of her. Everybody that knows Lisa is a little scared of Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah, she can beat me up if I'm not her friend anymore. Yeah. Sources revealed to multiple press outlets last night that New York Mayor Eric Adams has been indicted by a federal grand jury. The indictment will reportedly be, be unsealed today, but until then, little is known about the charges. Adams released a video statement last night and vowed to fight the entirely false indictment that he said was based on nothing but lies. Now, he says it's entirely it false. It is now my belief that the federal government intends to charge me with crimes. If so, these charges will be entirely false based on lies. I don't know what they are, but, but they're, they're lies. The mayor also referenced his speaking out against immigrants being brought to New York, saying, mm -hmm. Stood my ground, all of you, that I would be a target, and a target I became. Let me ask you uh, just a, a question, a matter of opinion. Does the fact that the DOJ and federal prosecutors are going after the mayor of New York City, who's a Democrat, argue against the former president's claim that the DOJ is only weaponized against him or MAGA Republicans? Absolutely. I mean, right. For Look, this, the DOJ, uh, cooperation for, with uh, not only uh, federal agencies, but state and local, 
are f- trying to find out. I guess the mayor is accused of maybe being an unregistered. It, we don't know. They haven't unsealed the documents yet, but we know what some of those close to him were for. Basically running city government like old Tammany Hall back in the Boss Tweed days. Right. No, but I think the, the fact that, exactly, the fact that a uh, uh, Democratic mayor... And they're aggressively getting, going aggressively, after the yeah. mayor of New York City, who some people described as the future of the Democratic Party, kind of argues against Trump's oh, it deal that it's all, they're, they're only against me. I mean, wh- what crazy person here is the FBI indicts uh, Donald Trump and they think, oh, well, it's the FBI's fault. He obviously <laughs> must have done nothing wrong. No, it means he probably did something wrong. It, it, yeah, it, it, probably. And in this case, it probably means that we're going to find something out. I think Eric Adams eventually will yeah. have to eat his own words there. Well, he's saying he is going to request uh, immediate. If I'm charged, I know I'm innocent. I will request an immediate trial so the New Yorkers can hear the truth. But you, he won't back down. But I have been facing these lies for months since I began to speak out for all of you and their investigation started. Yet the city has continued to improve. And he also responded to uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's call for him to resign. I don't listen to those comments that come from uh, a, you know, just basically a no-show congresswoman. Mm, we'll see. I, I, how is she a no-show congresswoman? Yeah, I don't know. That's a strange. That's a strange attack. Yeah. So the feds never go after Democrats. Well, this obviously is not true. I would add to that list Bob Menendez, right? Just from this year. And for anybody saying, well, Pres- uh, Joe Biden is in charge of the FBI, and he he suck, uh, sick the FBI after after Donald Trump. Did he sick the Did FBI sick after them? Eric right. Adams? Do you, do you think that's the reason that they stay away from from? There, there's that. only one candidate in the history of presidential politics that I can think of who has said that they would weaponize the FBI and send them after their political enemies and that's 45. Yeah. Democrats helped push a continuing resolution through Congress yesterday that will keep the federal government funded through December 20th. The bill keeps funding at the same level, with the exception of an additional $231 million for the Secret Service. 82 House Republicans voted against the CR, which passed in the chamber by a 341 to 82 final tally. The Senate passed the bill 78-18 later that day and then sent it to President Joe Biden for his signature. The bill was criticized by some Republicans for not including the SAVE Act, but Democrats in the White House praised Speaker Mike Johnson's legislation. Authorities say that 20-year-old Nathaniel McGuire allegedly walked into the Santa Maria Courthouse in California and tossed a small bag past the weapons screening station, which exploded as it hit the floor. Five people were injured in the blast, and McGuire was arrested as he was trying to get in his car to leave. He's been charged with attempted murder, using an explosive device, and attempting to kill someone and possessing an explosive and possession of explosive devices. His alleged motive? The suspect was scheduled to be arraigned on firearms violations that morning. The guy who tossed the bomb was going to be arraigned on firearms violations? So he tossed a bomb. See? It's not a firearm. <laughs> Somebody died. Did, did anybody? No. Five, five injured, people were injured. For injured. Yeah. A single individual entered the facility and threw a bag at the screening station. The male suspect has been identified as 20-year-old Nathaniel McGuire of Santa Maria. He was detained outside the courthouse as he tried to enter his red car. Mm. And a Secret Service agent has been accused of sexually assaulting a staff member who works for Vice President Kamala Harris and has been placed on administrative leave. Real Clear Politics reported that the agent and several of Harris staffers went to a hotel room after drinks and dinner, at which point the agent allegedly forced themselves on one of the staffers, groping her. The incident allegedly happened during an advanced trip to Wisconsin to prepare for a campaign event that wound up not happening. The incident was reportedly witnessed by others. Had you heard the story? No, I'm a little surprised that Secret Service fraternize with... uh 
if not the people they're protecting, people who work for the person you're protecting. Okay, so again, uh, having been watching the West, West Wing, Wing, I'm sure for, you have a unique insight from 1998 for all of us. Uh, no, I'm into the 2000s now okay. for sure. All right, but yeah, uh, w- some of the operations are exactly the same. What they do is, that anytime somebody is going to a place, whether it's the pre- anybody with a Secret Service detail, they will send Secret Service agents there in advance to kind of scout things out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes staffers go with them. And I don't know if you remember from the 90s, there used to be scandals around these advanced Secret Service guys. They would be partying or they would be doing this or that. That seems like a job where you would want a very sober-minded individual and group of individuals so working. the Secret Service agents have to try out anything that the president or the person that they're protecting might do. So if they were going to go to an amusement park, they would have to go... Check the amusement park. Get on the rides that they would get on. Uh, go to the restaurants that they're going to go to, order, you know, essentially they get to live the life of that person and it has been abused in the past. Uh, do you want to, do you want to wrap up news with that story? Yeah, I uh, got just one last story. Uh, actually two more, excuse me. Hooters of America is fighting to, f- <laughs> what? <laughs> just uh, a <laughs> story about Hooters. The headline is Hooters looking for support as revenue sag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's worth reporting just for the headline alone. Hooters of America is fighting to figure out how to get back to a firm financial standing. Okay. Re- the, the whole thing's going to be like this? <laughs> <laughs> Revenue declines have caused the chain to close several locations, and the company is currently getting guidance from Accordion Partners and the law firm Ropes & Gray on how to deal with its debt load. <laughs> when it announced the closures, Hooters cited pressure from current market conditions and said it would continue to open new locations. The chain has around $300 million in assets backed. I think Hooters kind of went unchallenged in the, you know, s- women wearing scanty clothes serving bar food yeah you know they didn't come out with uh, what are some of uh, twin peaks, twin peaks or, or tilted mug kilt. tilted kilt twisted kilt all those. you know f- for most of the 90s 2000s and even into the 2000s and 10s hooters really didn't have any competition at least not on a corporate nationwide level but guess what they're opening a lot of ojos locos baby Ojos Locos. You yeah. know they have Ojos Locos in other cities too? I did not I know. thought it was just an El Paso bar, but they got one. I think they got one in Dallas. And Houston. Hey, hey listen to that. There's hey, Alberto. Hey, sorry we had to make you stay awake, Alberto. Yeah, sorry no about problem. that. problem. But yeah, it's good Ojos to hear Ojos Locos is in Houston too. Mm-hmm. Nice. And Vegas. And Vegas. Really? And with your news, I'm Nico. All right, you were talking about the... Uh, Secret Service uh, member who is accused of assaulting uh, somebody on uh, Team Harris. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you hear that? Like somebody's going to be fired uh, because of the uh, the attempt, the first attempt on Trump's life. Somebody fired from the Secret Service. Somebody from the Secret Service is going to be fired. There's one Secret Service agent who was on the phone with tech support trying to figure out how to fly the drone. Like, he was on drone duty. Which would have seen a guy on a roof. <laughs> but it has come out that that, uh, that Secret Service, I think he was Secret You know, there were a lot of different agencies working. There Secret was- Service. Also, Department of Homeland Security agents were... Uh, Trump assassination attempt. Inexperienced Secret Service agent flying drone called toll-free number for help. This agent had just one hour of informal training on the drone. So, uh, maybe that guy's in the hot seat. He lied on But the also, prison. there's going to be somebody out there. How do you send a guy out that only had one hour of informal training right. to the point that he had to call the the 1-800 number to figure out how the drone works. Drone tech support, how can I assist you in piloting your drone today? Yes, I'm having trouble piloting the drone model 4-277B-A4. All right, sir, can I have your name, please? I'm not at liberty to disclose that information at this time. Okay, well then where are you? I'm not at liberty to disclose my location or any of the people in my vicinity or who I am as it is privileged information. Okay, so what seems to be the issue with your drone? I can neither confirm or deny that I am having an issue with my drone and in the interest of national security, I can give no more information pertaining to this drone. Well, you already told me that. You're having an issue with your drone, sir. I did? Abort! 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 Drone tech support mission! Abort! Who are you talking to? Nobody. This phone call never happened. I'm Daniel Paulus, and whether you're wrapping up your workday... Right. 
Let's as smooth as that first quiet morning coffee. Right drive, the only way to drive. Live from the KLAQ Studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. All right, so this is the uh, firefighter's calendar for 2025 that apparently you and Lisa had you and Lisa all in a tizzy yesterday, <laughs> Joanna. We're so excited for it. All right, yeah. say, say hi to uh, Gil Medina. Good morning, Gil. Gil Good morning. is, Gil is a, a firefighter. Did you say 30 years, almost 30 no, years? No, I'm going uh, 25 years. 25 oh years firefighter, but also the owner of Engine 3 Brewery, all right. which is on the east side. Uh, so welcome, Gil. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having us. So uh, the the fire chief is John Killings, and John, something like 25 years ago, uh-huh. came in when the firefighters first did the calendar because I think he was March. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so he was one of the original <gasps> hot firefighter hotties on the Sweet. calendar. Uh, what What is the cause that this raises money for? This is going for a uh, cancer fund that we have with a uh, local union mm-hmm. for firefighters. Mm-hmm. So all this, everything stays here 100%. Profits um, go oh. to that account, that fund. Uh, we use it for, you know, we get a lot of guys that get cancer during their career. Yeah. So we help them out with expenses that... Is insurance that, doesn't cover and stuff like that. Is that from the nature of the work? Or yes. Is that, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's inhaling. Nine out of ten cancer uh, situations is because of, of of being in the fire department. So, mm-hmm. so we try to help them out with that. Also, for immediate family, if, if one of the kids gets sick, they need to go out of town. We try to help out. Um, on, on so, that. so supporting firefighters and their families, families. and their dependents. Yes, sir. A yes, very sir. worthy cause. Yes, See, great. I told you it was for a good cause. I knew it would be. <laughs> I knew they, they weren't just raising beer money. I knew Last that night, it was Lisa and I were texting in this chat, and we're talking about this calendar. And Lisa's like, who's the first person I see that's already following this? You. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul, it's for a good cause. You're the number one fan right now. <laughs> when is the calendar going to be out in time for Christmas, for instance? Yes, there's, that's why we're doing this event on uh, Saturday all right. from 4 to 8 at Ancient 3 Brewing Company next to the Firefighters Hall. So they'll be releasing the calendar there. So that's the first place you could go and get it. So the guys will be there. They're meet and greet, hang out. What's well, the oldest guy on the calendar this year? Uh, I don't want to say. <laughs> no, uh, there's different ages. So um, I know there's a couple that are yeah. not super young, but, you know, they're not <laughs> well, old either. So. I just wanted to say, <laughs> if, if you ever have a shortage of firefighters, I would... Step in. I'd put You'd on be like, a volunteer firefighter. Yeah, suspenders and the hat and give me yeah. a Dalmatian. Uh, you know. sure. a Dalmatian. <laughs> yeah. Now I think we got 14 guys in the calendar. Oh, my so, gosh. Oh. Yeah. So, so, it, so it'll, it'll be a good, good turnout. And, nice. Um, yeah, stop by and check us out. When are they going to be available after Saturday? Uh, I believe we're going to have them upstairs. We're next to the firefighters hall, mm-hmm. so we have an office upstairs where we sell the merchandise and stuff like that. So okay. I'm sure we're going to have some there. We can get them on Saturday. Uh, I believe some of the guys are keeping some to sell. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, Saturday, so. 4 to 8 at four to Engine eight. 3. Yes, sir. What's the address? Of, I know it's, it's on the east side. It's sort of east side. 3112 Forney Lane. Right on the corner of uh, Pebble Hills and the Trevino, next to the firefighters' hall. All right. I thought, uh, since Gil's here, Gil's a firefighter. He also yep. owns the, the brewery, mm-hmm. Engine 3. Firefighter, true or false? I'm just going to throw some stuff out there, <laughs> and you tell me if it's true or not. Sure. True or false? You guys still have that pole that you can slide down. Some mm-hmm. of the stations, they do. Is it more of an old-fashioned thing at this point? Or the older just- stations, yes. They're getting oh. away from that. All the new stations don't have them. Um, there's injuries when you're sliding down. Sometimes half asleep, you you know. Just, oh, I know. I dated a stripper. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's some interesting burns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For Firefighter sure, so. true or false with Gil Medina. Uh, everybody rotates responsibility for preparing the meals. Yes, for the most part, everybody takes turns every shift. Uh, sometimes we cook. Uh, lunch, dinner, and breakfast. So one guy gets assigned for that shift, and they. Now, are there some guys that the firefighters are happy that they're doing the food? And like they're some like, guys oh, that- Gil's gonna be making enchiladas today." Yeah, actually, <laughs> um, 
at the other station when I used to be at Station 24, I was a permanent cook for yeah. like three wow. years. So every shift I cooked three meals. I like cooking. Who's guess, responsible for going out and buying the food? Uh, whoever's cooking. Uh, oh, whoever's okay. Cooking. Yeah, I mean, it, we tried it where we send guys. You got to pay for that out of pocket or the yes, fire department? No. Pay? Oh, no, no. We pay everything out of, out of uh, our because pocket. Because firefighters work, uh, you know, an unusual schedule. Yeah, 24-hour yeah, shifts. 24-hour shifts. Mm-hmm. Only one 24 hours or do you some, you, and you break that up with uh, eight hours of sleep somehow, right? Uh, we try to, but <laughs> it doesn't really, work out. that doesn't work out. Uh, true or false, most of the uh, times you see a fire engine, they're going to the scene of a, it's a medical call, not necessarily a fire. True. Yeah. Yeah, I would say 70% they're medical right. calls, the other 30 fires, assistance, you name it. We're plumbers, we're electricians. <laughs> People call us for, for pretty much any, any, anything to unlock their cars. And True or false, have you ever been called out to get some lady's cat out of a tree? Because that's a thing I remember oh, yeah. from TV shows. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> really? Because sure. yeah. you got the ladder. and <laughs> Yeah, and then as soon as we get there, we tell them the cat's going to, if it got up there, it's going to come down by itself. Right. And as soon as they see the ladder going up, they jump off. So Right, because yeah. they know. We never get to them. Yeah. So. Um, True or false, have you ever worked in a station that had its own Dalmatian? I remember seeing when I was a kid, any book about firefighters had a Dalmatian on the truck with them. No, that's false. That's, uh, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I, I think if we had pets in the station, they would probably end up dying. Oh, God. <laughs> Sometimes we're gone. You know, Not we, from your cooking, I no, hope. No, no, no. No, no if they we would eat their, our food, they'll probably be a little hefty. And, you know, so, uh, <laughs> would be good. Nobody wants a fat fire dog. Fire no, dog. no, no. So. <laughs> Joanna, do you have any do you have any questions? Yes, what about month is Sparky the mascot? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't even I haven't even seen the calendar. Oh, no. It's gonna be like freshly on Saturday. Sparky is gonna, their mascot, yeah. Buzz. Oh, right. The Dalmatian. Oh, there is a Dalmatian. Yeah, we have one. It's a it's, mascot. Okay, but, but not, mascot. not like every firehouse. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It's just no. like the mascot for all. I of think them. that's all movies and Disney. Yeah, right. And right. Yeah. At a fire station. Uh, f- uh, all right, here's one for you. This is my theory. We don't get out of control wildfires in El Paso, I believe, because there's not enough vegetation. You know, okay. you hear about these wildfires in New Mexico. That's always someplace where there's stuff to burn. Right. I think before a fire really gets out of hand. It, you know, you got desert landscaping. Do you have you ever thought about this? Do you think there could be some some credibility to what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. We get once here and there, two, three times a year where we get like a brush fire where there's a lot of yeah, dry. We, we never get a hundred acres. Oh, I've no. never heard of that before. No, no, no. Right. No, we don't have the trees here too. Uh-huh. That's, to, that's yeah. okay. Good. Fires, that confirms so. what I've been thinking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're always in a drought, so. That's true. Well, but in a drought also means yeah. dry. And yeah, yeah. That, and that's when we get those the weeds. You know. Do you have more calls for fires uh, around around Fourth of July, or is is does it not really see a, a no, bump? not really. I think we get more during the holidays, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas. People. What cooking. is it about the holiday? Well, people cook. Somebody they put in the turkey. They go and do other stuff. They forget the turkey's in there. Somebody's trying to and cook a turkey in a trash yeah. can or whatever. That's why I tell my nephew that. every year. Every year he wants to fry a turkey, yeah. and I'm like, no, fire hazard. Yeah, we got a lot of grease fires. That's mostly. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so you could get some of those calendar firefighters out there for Thanksgiving, Joanna. I know. I'm going to start a it. fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Gil, Gil Medina is a firefighter and also the owner of Engine Three Brewery, and they're having an event this Saturday, four to eight, and you can uh, you can get the calendars. Yes, and some could, of the guys will be there too. There. Guys are going to be there. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have uh, uh, we're going to set up a flag. We have some uh, f- uh, fire trucks out there. So yeah, it's well, we open at twelve, but the events from four to eight. Uh, come and support okay, us. But anybody could go out to the to the bar. Yeah, and yeah, it's a family evening. friendly. Um, you know, we get a lot of people. All right. For sure with a cool. I'm sure bring a lot your of pets, bring your family. Uh, um, I'm sure you can get autographs from the firefighters yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. if you want to. Ah, get, sweet. get plenty of them. Give take, them out as Christmas take presents. Some pictures. Mm. Take, you know, have right. them sign the their month they their, they have. And well, thank you, Gil. Uh, thanks for coming by, and everybody should go out there and check out. If you haven't seen uh, Engine Three, it's a it's a obviously a firefighter themed bar. But it's not just for firefighters. It's not a private club. No, yeah, no, no. Anybody could go. We get plenty of people. All right. Uh, thanks, Gil, for <laughs> dropping by. Yeah, thank All you. Right. Thank you for having uh, me. Let's take a break, and more of the Buzz Adams Morning Show is coming up right after this. While you're working away, we're working for you. 
Our job. In Mexico, like in the U.S. countries, one network, only with AT&T. Visit att.com slash one network for details. Originating in El Paso for El Paso, the Buzz Adams Morning Show, 95.5 KLAQ. All right, Stephanie uh, Valle is here from our, our news partners at ABC7, KBIA, and she's talking about her latest Borderland Crimes podcast, the award-winning Borderland oh. Crimes podcast. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Buzz. Thank you. You know, uh, it's it's always great to catch up with you, and uh, but then we switch gears, and, and <laughs> your Borderland Crimes are always like, you know, like pretty dark yeah. stuff, of course, because it's a murder podcast. Yeah, and it's a little early in the morning. Right. Uh, too early to have Halloween decorations up or not too early? No, I don't think it's too early. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Do you put up Halloween decorations? I don't. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> Are you I, sure? live on, it, I live on a cul-de-sac. <laughs> She's looking at the big old skeleton yeah. we have in No, I, I didn't put that up. That, oh. that was, would be more effort than I've ever put into Halloween. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> well, we do the parade. On Halloween Day. That's yes. a lot of effort, Buzz. Have you ever that been to one of those? Of I have The parades are, yeah, because you're working. It was it was always in the morning and I was on the morning show, but I was telling myself, because I, when I was driving no, into no, the parking no, lot, the, that big the, truck, not, I, I want to go. Not the Sun Carnival Parade. No. The Halloween Wasn't Parade. Wasn't it in the morning? No, in the afternoon. What? What time does the parade usually three. start? Like three. three. Yeah. Didn't it ever used to be in the morning? I have no idea, actually. I've started being on it when it was on at three. Okay. Well, now that I know that it's at three. <laughs> when I, I started, it, it was at three, and that was a long, long time ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> by making my excuse just fell apart. I'm sorry. I know. Don't no, put my, my, my excuse for not putting up decorations is I live on a cul-de-sac that's really hard but to find. Nobody would, see it. In. Nobody oh. would see it. If anybody was going to see it, it would be me, meaning I'd have to turn the lights on or whatever. Ever. Yeah, become a beacon. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, or someone would see it and they're like, ooh, that's a weird looking It would house. look weird because your house is hidden. A couple years scary. ago, my girlfriend mm. at the time decided we're doing oh, Halloween right. and she bought like a, an abnormal amount of candy to hand out. And I was telling her, and I was trying to tell her in Spanish. Uh -huh. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Los niños no ven aquí. <laughs> a mi casa. That's really good. Is end muerte. That's not how you say that end in Spanish, but I tried. <laughs> is una col de sac. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, she, Halloween rolls around, uh -huh. and she's just sitting there dressed as a witch with mm -hmm. all the candy, and it looks so deserted, none of the kids come down. So sad. Ours isn't a great trick-or-treating neighborhood in the first place a lot of them are not yeah it's hard it's, it's hard like when dying. neighborhoods don't yeah. have kids like. or they all go to one certain neighborhood you know like everybody goes to kern and yes it's insane or they go Rim to Road, the Montwood uh, area the or willows Rim. gets going yeah that, it's like you know. it's become a, mm -hmm. a neighborhood thing as opposed to like right. your, your own neighborhood thing you drive somewhere i mean it's insane my i went to mm -hmm. the Montwood area last year and it's just, I can't, I'm thinking about it right now. <laughs> You're already panicking. <laughs> yeah. There were like a thousand, thousands of people walking on the street. Wait, it you, gets did you take so your kids crowded. There? I took, oh, yeah, I took my kids. Uh, my parents live in the area. Uh -huh. So that was why I was there. But yeah, it, it was just nuts. It gets crazy. So now, do you, do, do, it is, is. It, is it Halloween? Is it just the decorations you don't get into? I mean, do you, do you I, I dress like, as a costume? Do you ever go to any parties? I think my inability to dress up at work. You know, in a costume has kind of. I've seen oh, I've yeah. seen local news, especially morning shows. Oh yeah, that dress up. Well, Al Roker does every year with his yeah. crew on the Today Show. Well, it's because like they have help <laughs> getting into costumes. Stephanie's like they don't let us. They don't let us. <laughs> they don't what? let us. I dressed up as Anchor Woman Barbie last year. <laughs> Cute. Posted it on my Instagram. It's like a pink outfit. Yeah, that, that works. works. Yeah. I dressed up as Lois Lane, another news person. See, See I try and you find can try Yeah, but how would anybody know that you're Lois Lane exactly. unless you had a name tag that said Lois Lane? I don't know. she dresses like a journalist. In spirit, she knew. I knew. Yeah. I knew. And then I posted it on <laughs> Instagram. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into the Borderland Crime Podcast conversation. So this uh, is a triple homicide, <gasps> apparently a home invasion, uh, and it was a cold case for something like 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Right. And you say home invasion, but Buzz, there was no sign of forced entry. See, I 
Okay. Yeah. So home invasion, in, as in, I read one account, uh, not yours, of course, but I was, <laughs> I was, you know, kind of checking stuff out. One account said that the 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 woman Connie Via, mm-hmm. who was twenty eight, she along with her three year old son, right, and her longtime partner were all murdered. Yes. Okay. It said that the sister knew something was wrong when she saw signs of forced entry. So, but you're telling me that, and I guess you probably talked to some of the sisters yes. and the, maybe the daughters yes. of so, uh, Francisco. I spoke to the sisters and the brother of Connie Villa. Uh-huh. I reached out to the Santoni family in all fairness. I did not, I had looked for, well... I had looked for a certain family member, but could not find that person. Didn't know names of children until very recently, so reached out to them as well. So I hope that they reach back okay, and then so. we can talk more. But yes, so what happened was I spoke to the family. They said that a sister had gone to the house because no one had been able to get Connie on the phone. Remember, this is 1994, pre-cell phone. Mm-hmm. So they went to her house. Probably couldn't even su- send an email back then. Most right. people couldn't. Right, it was like dial-up. So... They, she goes to the house and she saw the first thing that she saw was the car was still there at the house. It was in the garage and or they said garage. I wonder if she meant driveway. So she saw that there were still people there, even though it was like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. And that was strange. But she gets into the house and that's when she finds everybody had been murdered. They were all so stabbed. All together. stabbed. Each victim. Uh, of the three. So the mother of the three-year-old, the father of the three-year-old, and the three-year-old, they had all been stabbed yes. at least 10 times. Yes. yes. And uh, they, I don't, they didn't have a suspect until some DNA evidence came up. Right. And we don't even know what exactly that is. A lot of speculation <laughs> that it could have been somebody took one of those 23 Me tests and that might have turned up some kind of connection. How interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean... How do you, does the family have any idea how the police made an arrest? I guess thirty years later, almost thirty years later. No, they they just said that they were told that they um, they arrested the guy. I asked, and they tell you how. So this is what we got. Had from, they given up at all? On, I, I uh, think thinking they'd ever find somebody. Yes, the the brother explicitly said that. He said, "I had kind of resigned myself to thinking we may never know the answer." All right. So, who did they arrest? They and arrested. What were the circumstances of that arrest? All right. So, in uh, just two years ago, in 2022, El Paso police announced they arrested a guy. His name's Arturo Ortega Garcia. They said they found him in Mexico City, and they extradited him into the United States. Was he in jail in Mexico when they found him? I think he might have been because the only thing they said was they learned of his location in the year 2020 and that's when he was arrested. So I don't really know what he was arrested for. We Did you reach out to PD? That. El Paso police usually does not respond to me. Okay. All right. Do they know that you're an award-winning <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> crime podcast? Yeah. All right. They're like, yeah, we know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so there are some key details missing like how did they connect this guy yes. to the crime how did they do it after so many years yes. what was the dna evidence was it at the crime scene or was it some website or Those, these you are know? great questions yeah these are all- right so- I mean, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you you would have asked all of them yes if you'd talk to somebody yes so in 2015 this is what they said in a, in a news release in um they were able to reopen the case in 2015 after technology allowed them to um use I guess they used technology to find that it was Arturo Ortega Garcia. See, that leads me to believe, because that was right around the time they started identifying people because family members had, had DNA tests. Mm. And I guess, have you ever heard of this yes, before? Yes, you're sure. right. It was the like the Golden Gate. The Golden, uh, the the golden, golden State Killer. Golden State Killer. Yeah. One of uh, his yeah. relatives had done one of these DNA tests. Yes. And somehow they caught him because of that. Oh, and it was yeah. right around that time. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So, yes, all we know is that in 2015, they, they believed that he had something to do with it. But again, we don't know a motive. El Paso police have never divulged a motive. The family I spoke to has absolutely no, no idea. No idea. No. And they were I, saying, I've we seen, just can't get over why you would kill a three-year-old. Yeah, why would you do that? Which has led some people to think, you know, it was a hit. Like it was organized. Right. The father, Francisco uh, Santori. Santoni. Mm-hmm. Santoni. Uh, had a job that took him to Mexico frequently. So he did a lot. What, yeah. what did he do exactly? He did auto parts exporting. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. But listen, and this is all pure speculation, I guess. Right, and that, that's why I always am like, I try to be careful because journalistically, I I don't report on speculation. Yeah, I understand. But I, I understand that it would lead it's, you to believe that it had something to do with you know, an outside, like, was it a, was it a hit? We don't know. I spoke with the district attorney about this. Bill, um, Bill Hicks. Yes. I, um, I asked him what was going to happen in this case because there's a hearing today. And he was telling me that um, the defendant gave them some information that led to them to believe that maybe he was less culpable or there's someone else culpable. Yeah. I like how Joanna like looks over I at am me. I'm what? Yeah. <laughs> And so I Wait said, a minute, three family members and you were kind of culpable? Yeah. How I, so? I said, "How? who's less culpable than the person who stabbed them? And he <laughs> the said- The person who, told, who ordered him to go do and it. And he said, well, and that's what I said too. That, I said, is Hicks this a said? hit? Yeah. And he said, and I wouldn't go that far. He said, no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. But I don't know what he would say because he didn't tell me. <laughs> right. He didn't tell me what he means. And so I'm looking forward to seeing if any of that information comes out in this hearing at the very least. But at the most, all of this information would come out if we had a trial. Because when you get a plea deal, you really don't get information. Mm. You just get like the, the well, story. And I, I think at this point, bringing uh, the murderer to justice is the number one priority. But a close second is why. You know, finding out maybe some closure as and remember a a kid who had just turned three right. was stabbed. Yeah, I, in his bed. It's something that I try not, I try not to think about that too much because I don't understand how someone can do that. I don't understand how, why, why you would stab a three year old. Right. This was, this all happened well after midnight. He was asleep. In the middle of the night. Yeah, and stole a car. Stole one of the stole family's one of the cars, family vehicles, and ditched um, it uh, pretty close to the border. So they exactly. were assuming in 1994, yeah, that he, he skipped across to Mexico. to Mexico. And remember, in '94, because I think about like, yeah, you're talking about you know 23 and Me, but DNA was not even something that they really knew about. They knew it existed. They knew, they knew it to existed, collect but, things, they, but they, they weren't sure enough to really bring it up. You know, the OJ trial is right. one where they famously brought up. DNA. Yes. And, and it seems like, like it's been a DNA world ever since then. Yes, exactly. So I want to ask you a journalism question. Okay. You said that you didn't get a call back from PD. Mm -hmm. uh, do you find it's harder to get somebody to go on the record for a podcast than it is when you're doing your reporting job as a journalist for KVIA? I think that when it comes to the podcast, um, they... I have gotten fewer calls back, so I just don't tell them it's for the podcast sometimes. And now I'm divulging my secrets. Okay. But it's I still consider the podcast reporting because it is still investigative reporting. And well, I don't understand why they wouldn't. I think still you call get painted back. with a brush that there are some podcasts out there that are crime murder podcasts that are lurid. Yeah. You know, yeah. that are shocking. Well, right. you're some I mean, obviously some of the topics are shocking, but I think if if they listen to the podcast and heard the level of professionalism that yeah. you approach, especially the victims and the victims' families. Yeah, I think maybe there, or maybe it's just a uh, department policy. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we could talk about it off mic. <laughs> 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 but I do get emails back when I'm asking about day of stuff, and so sometimes they just don't respond if I even mention borderline crimes. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. Like it, with this case, especially. A ton of wild speculation yeah. about what the motive might have been. Uh, it kind of reminded me a little bit of how they're now delaying the uh, the Walmart shooter trial. Mm. Like the family members are, have you, of course you've yeah. been following that. The family members are uh, troubled that it's taken so long. And then they just announced they're not even going to seat a jury or impanel a jury until November. Well, that's when the trial hopefully will start yeah. is 16 months from now. Yeah. Uh, wow. Can you shed some light on that? Because a lot of people want to know what, what the holdup is here. I I, I should probably be asking Bill Hicks, this, <laughs> right? Yeah, but he technically shouldn't be even be speaking about the case right. due to the gag order. Because the gag order has already delayed it. Right. The gag order was broken when uh, Rosales Right. Was the dist uh, district was attorney. the district attorney. Yeah. So the less they talk about it, but I know certainly some family members want an answer about wait a minute, why did it just get pushed back uh sixteen months? Right. I, I understand their frustration. 
um, because you hear this from so many victims that the minute this case enters the judicial system, Mm -hmm. the victims are forgotten and their family members are put to the side because it's all about making sure that everything is done to the letter of the law because if something is not done to the letter of the law, then the person who's being prosecuted, the defendant, um, has a you know right to appeal. If you look at the Bill of Rights, there are so many more rights that pertain to the rights of the accused mm-hmm. as opposed to victims. I, there are no rights for victims in the Constitution. Mm-hmm. So just for the in accused. the Bill of Rights, yeah, it's all about it's all about the accused. So going back to your original question, Joe Spencer is very much against the death penalty. He doesn't believe in it at all. And he's the attorney for the... For the the, the Walmart shooter. I guess we could say call him the Walmart shooter because he's already been convicted on the... Right. uh, Right. He was federally convicted. And what was the sentence? And um, Not a death penalty. Correct. So the federal... um, The U.S. government declined the um, death penalty in that case. So he's been sentenced to 90 consecutive life terms in prison. There is no way... Yeah, but those are hate crimes charges. Those were um, committing murder with the weapons right. charges. So not capital murder eligibility for the death penalty that you see in the state of Texas. Uh, should people feel, especially uh, survivors and family members, feel comforted to know that at least, at the very worst, this guy's never getting out of jail, I think out of prison? I think there's definitely, that's when you, you get to individual ideas of what is justice yeah, right. and that's why we have the death penalty because some people feel like the ultimate punishment is death but and but having know. covered I'm, these I'm, cases they take a very long time to go, to get through the system you know like when i went to the um david Arventheria execution mm-hmm. 20 years on death row um there are people from el paso who've been on death row for 30 years. Oh my God. Or almost 30 years. Right. So again, it's a, it's a personal idea of what justice is. Um, and it's certainly not my place to try it's to not convince my place. a victim. Uh-huh. Right. I'm not, I'm not a survivor or a victim I, right. other than I think, you know, everybody in El Paso is equally traumatized right. just right. by it happening. But beyond that, it is definitely the survivors and their family members whose opinion counts in this. Right. But ultimately, when you get into the courtroom, it is a prosecutor, it is a defense attorney and the judge. And so the defense attorney is doing his his best to make sure that the death penalty option is, you know, delayed. Is uh, Joe Spencer working pro bono? Was he, uh, he, he was no, hired. He was hired. Right, because somebody had written in and they were trying to com- claim that he was a, a court-appointed attorney. Joe Spencer is a very high-priced attorney. Yes. Well, okay. So there's a definitely a difference between court-appointed and pro bono. Mm-hmm. So what happened was way back when this happened, um, the the courts had decided that we they would not assign a local attorney to handle his defense because he is indigent, considered indigent, meaning he could not hire his own attorney. So that means he had to be appointed one by the court. They said, we're not going to appoint someone from El Paso because obviously this is really fresh. So they assigned a, an attorney from San Antonio okay. named Mark Stevens. Now, Mark Stevens said, well, I need someone there local who can help me with the day-to-day. So therefore, he brought on El Joe. Paso attorney Joe Spencer. So they are I, I not, will say yeah. Joe Spencer is a very h- highly thought of defense yes. attorney in the city. He's, he's one of the best yeah. and he's very good at his job and um, he's very passionate. So... The, the thing is, they are not they are not pro bono. They are appointed. They are paid with tax dollars because. But they're getting paid. They are getting paid. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, so find out all about this. There are many interesting uh, details uh, going back exactly thirty years to nineteen ninety four. Right. And that is the case of Connie Via, her three year old son Dante, mm-hmm. and, and her Francisco. partner Francisco. All right. Yeah. Check that out on the latest Borderland Crimes podcast. You can find it at KVIA or wherever you get your podcast. Exactly. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you, Buzz. Have a great weekend. All right. All right. Too. Let's take a break. We'll come back. More of the Buzz Adams Morning Show's on the way right after this. Music news. Concert updates. Song and album factoids. And of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh, Getting your flu shot if you're recommended by the CDC. Ask your healthcare provider in book at VaxAssist.com. Sponsored by Pfizer. 
The Buzz Adams Morning Show, Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLEQ and KLEQ HD1, El Paso, a town square media station. Okay, let's hit it! All right, it's just about to hit 9 o'clock. That means we'll have another cash code coming up in the next few minutes. Cash code. Uh, I also have random facts that I'd like to share with you. And one Thank of our you. facts, I'm, I really went down a rabbit hole. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go deep into one of our facts, which has to do with Jack in the Box tacos. Oh, my God, I love those. A topic that people always respond to. Yes. The Jack in the Box tacos. Is that meat or is it some kind of paste? And is it even both? <laughs> is it even protein related every it's time we talk this. about them because apparently we talk about them a lot on this show because <laughs> we love them so much every time i get calls and people are like you know that's not real meat girl i don't care if it is it's good, good. Well, and cheap uh, i'll cover that whether or not you're gonna real... show us how the sausage is made yeah, I guess oh so. god mm. I mean, if you open up one of those tacos, you're not going to like what you see. Yeah, don't <laughs> you know? do that. Just put your hot sauce and go the, about your day. The meat looks like they squeezed it out of a tube. Kind of. And they of. don't even try and cover that up. A delicious tube. Also, if you go to the Jack in the Box website, uh-huh. uh, when it comes to ingredients, they mention two slices of American cheese. Is this already part lettuce. of the random oh, facts? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just, okay. Save it for the random I'm, facts. I'm chomping at the bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm ready to get into this. All right. Ben Stiller is directing a pickleball movie. What? That's so funny from to Dodge me. Ball? Yeah, from Dodgeball. Dodgeball. Right. It seems like <laughs> Dodgeball was kind of the zeitgeist of the time. I wonder what the five D's of pickleball are going to be. Doink. <laughs> Die. But Dodge will always be one of them. <laughs> Uh, 20 years ago, Ben Stiller started in Dodgeball. 20 years ago? And, uh... Today's sport of the moment seems to be pickleball. So pickleball. Ben, uh, ben Stiller is directing a movie called The Dink. There you go. Dink. The Dink. Oh, the, dink. the Dink. The Dink. The Donk. Uh, it stars Jake Johnson as a washed up tennis pro who becomes a pickleball player to save a club in crisis. Oh, my no. God. So it's That's dodgeball, cool. but is with gonna, pickleball. Is he going to get Vince Vaughn to start it? Our average <laughs> Joe's going to come out in it? <laughs> Steve the Pirate? Mm hmm. Yar. <laughs> <laughs> cast also includes Mary Steenburgen and Ed Harris. Uh, ben Stiller will be in it, but he's not playing the lead. That's played by Jake Johnson. I don't know who that is. Oh, he came out in New Girl, Nick Miller. He's great. Oh. Okay. Oh, you never watched New Girl. Watch it. It's funny. What, Mean Girls? New Girl. Oh, New Girl. It's a <laughs> uh, Let's see. Do you remember last week, Shohei, Shohei Otani? Mm-hmm stole his 50th base of the season and hit his 50th and I believe 51st home run You mentioned one it, game. yeah. Well, somebody ended up with that 50th home run ball. Oh, okay. And uh, they don't want to sell it to the Dodgers. The Dodgers offered to buy it for $300,000. Whoa! And he said no. No? I mean, he. I say he, uh, not necessarily. He, we I don't think know it is. It is. I saw it on the news this morning. Uh, so the person who got the ball is going to auction it off with a starting bid of five hundred thousand dollars, or oh my god, you could buy it outright. He'll part with it for four point five million dollars. So that's a lot more than the three hundred thousand oh that the Dodgers are offering. Mm-hmm. At that point, do you think he's being greedy? I mean, it's like a once. Why do the Dodgers want it? You know, because they get the memorabilia. It. They probably okay. put it in, if not the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. Little, yeah, uh, I'm like, yeah, why would the, they want to buy it back? Part but, of okay, uh, yeah. part of history. You I know? see. I see. It's like having a Babe Ruth. Looks like they, uh, a lot of times it works though. Um, Here's the story. They got to up their bid then. Uh, so before we went on with Stephanie, she noticed a story that was uh, on my prep sheet. Uh, a student harassed a McDonald's worker but blamed it on chat GPT. So I guess uh, what this guy said, a 27-year-old student, 27-year-old student in the UK was accused of stalking and harassing a female McDonald's employee. And at some point, he could tell that his texts were were putting her off. Okay. It was probably around the time that she blocked him. Oh. So he asked chat GPT AI 
to compose a text for him. Uh-oh. Well, that's the one that kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. So in court, he's arguing, well, I was nervous, so I got Chat GPT. So it oh wasn't even me; God. it was Chat GPT that wrote that. I had no Riz, Your Honor, so <laughs> I had to go on Chat GPT. Okay, <gasps> so so this guy, twenty-seven-year-old guy in the UK, first bumped into this woman when he was working as a delivery driver, and he'd deliver stuff to McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Uh, they exchanged social media, and you know he hit her up later, mm-hmm. right? But okay. she never responded to his messages. Aww, Oof. Man. She ghosted him immediately. And she eventually blocked him. It's like, Ooh. dude, take, come on, guy. Well, take a, take take a, a hand. hand. Yeah, Read the room. Hand. Yeah, right. If they don't answer and they block you. Take that's a hand. That's a hand. Yeah. Don't be in the DMs talking to yourself. Then, <laughs> after he was blocked, he showed up at the McDonald's she worked at. Oh, no. To order a milkshake. And see her. And he also asked about her and where oh, she was. Oh, dude. <laughs> that was the first thing that's that was interpreted one. as harassment. Okay. That is harassment. He did buy a, a milkshake. I mean, he still it was is a, a paying customer. I mean, the real story here is that the McDonald's ice cream machine worked. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was like, is Rebecca If I were the lawyer, I'd be like, hold up. Well, the machine was working? You went and you were able to get a milkshake at a McDonald's? Your Honor, I say we studied that instead. <laughs> Uh, the woman also claims that the man once followed her in his car, but he he denies that he did that. Oh. Uh, right. In court, he <laughs> asked if he thought that he had crossed a line at any point, and he answered no. Oh, he didn't God. think he did anything wrong. No, Your Honor. The prosecutor pointed out that the man did apologize. That's in one of his social media messages before she blocked him, he said, and this is the one that turned out to be Chad GPT. All right? Okay. okay. All right. I understand that my messages may make you feel uncomfortable, but then suggested meeting up again. But the man said, no, 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 no. I didn't apologize. He says, I was desperate to go on a date. Wasn't sure oh. why the woman, the McDonald's worker, wasn't responding. So he asked AI, <gasps> chat GPT, what he should do. Hmm. Oh chat GPT, God. according to this guy, said that he should message again and Gave him the message to send. Oh, my God. Well, that didn't help his case. No, of course not. He's in jail now. He was found. <laughs> he is in jail. Well, no, he's not in jail oh, yet. Man. He was found guilty, though. <gasps> guilty of stalking. Good. And Put will him be jail. sentenced next month. I hope. Okay. Jail. If she blocked you or she's not responding anymore. Stay away. That's a hint out there. And That's, for women, too. He's I mean, not it's responding. not even a hint. It's basically oh, the... Don't message me. It's right. just you. It's like Alberto says. It's just you talking to yourself in those DMs. Yes. It, uh, Nico's... Uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure Alberto's been in that position before. A hundred and a million times. <laughs> a block is a step away from a restraining order. So literally take it as the sign. When someone blocks you, stay away from them. Facts. That's my advice for this. Speaking of facts, you want to hear the random facts for today? Yes. All right, let's do it. And now it's time for... One, two, three. Random. Random. Random facts. Random facts. A couple of times, three times, maybe a week. It varies. We like to look at random facts, and hopefully there'll be at least something here that you've not heard before. Uh, We're going to start with random fact. Well, this is a good one to start with. Factoid. Random fact number one. From 1923 to 1969, the official language of Illinois was American. <laughs> just, oh my God. It was just called so they American. Could go say, you got to speak American. <laughs> yeah, we speak American in Illinois, except when we're speaking Polish or Italian. Anything or other than American. Ha, huh, interesting. Brand of fact number two. Now, okay. The first movie to feature the word vagina. Ooh. Huh, vagina was a Disney movie. Wow. A Disney movie? Yeah. Would you care to guess which Disney movie was the first motion picture in America to include the word vagina? Vagina. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> Snow White. The li- no, The Little Mermaid? No. 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 Peter Pan? It was an educational film released in 1946 called The Story of Menstruation. Nice. (laughs) So like the ones that they make you watch in fifth grade when they separate the boys and the girls? Probably something like that. (laughs) And uh, finally, I told you I had facts about Jack in the Box tacos, okay? Uh, Yes. Random fact number three. Wow. Americans eat 554 million tacos from Jack in the Box every year. Or another way to put that, 
about 1,000 jack-in-the-box tacos are eaten every minute. Oh, man, they're so good. That's and surprisingly why. not by me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so do you want to find it? Do you want to hear something about the recipe? Okay. That taco recipe... <gasps> All right. We'll get to it. Don't we'll worry. Yeah. Uh, the recipe has not changed in about 50 years. And the official recipe uh, from Jack in the Box for their tacos is <laughs> seasoned meat lump. Meat lump. I'm sorry. What what, what animal is? is the lump? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it's seasoned. Okay. So. Seasoned meat lump. Two triangles of American cheese, two triangles. shredded iceberg lettuce, Yum. Okay. and a little sauce. A little. I mean, that sounds terrible. But, it's but uh, yeah, on paper, it. it does not sound great. I think that's why people are so fascinated with it because you look, it even looks disgusting. And it if you open it up, great, it looks right. like a baby's diaper. But, it's, I, mean, it's but so. I mean, you just got to put your hot sauce on it and move forward with fervor. But once you start eating them, Hell yeah. especially if it's late at night. And Late at night or had... early in the morning here at the station? Yeah. Uh, oh, those tacos hit every time. According to an article on isitbadforyou.com, <laughs> <laughs> they describe the taco filling as, quote, an unattractive looking paste containing <sighs> texturized protein, which is essentially soy flour no. with caramel coloring. As well as defatted soy grits. So no meat. So no meat. So it's vegetarian. Nice. And it has protein. Oh, we're That's just getting that. started, kids. Oh God, there's more. The f- the tacos are frozen and kept in a fridge next to the fryer. When Jack in the Box tacos are ordered, frozen tacos. If anybody ever worked at Jack in the Box, I think and you I can confirm this. I think or I know that because I had a, a boyfriend who worked at, at Jack, Jack in the, the Box. Box. Frozen tacos are pulled from the fridge and placed in a taco holder that is dunked in the fryer for a predetermined, quote, taco time. It is true. That's exactly how your boyfriend said it was done. How can they be so good? How They're so good. You got to believe. Uh, you just don't look at it. Have you seen how uh, White Castle is made? No, you don't look at how it's made. You just eat it, I love all right? That show, I brought by the way. I bought how the it's made. I bought the uh, <laughs> microwavable. Uh, oh, I White buy the, the microwavable one. I can ones never too. get it the right level of no. hot. Like part of it is it will Freezing. scald your tongue yep. and the other part it's is still got ice frozen. on it. You know it, what yeah. fixes that? Air fryer. Really? In the air fryer. I can't. It It'll take down my power. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and now Leave me in the dark. You know, they've been <laughs> serving those tiny tacos for a while. Those are fun. Oh, those oh, yeah. are so good, too. They got okay. the monster taco right now. They make me feel like what's, a giant. What's the monster? Huge, they do. It makes big... it feel like a giant I'm went to go have tacos. Yeah. Yeah. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I yeah. smell <laughs> just de- gr- defatted grits. <laughs> uh, here's a commercial from 1976. 76. Jack in the Box restaurants are having a taco sale. <laughs> Okay, I, I have to tell you, right, that <laughs> when everybody says yay, you see about 30 hats tossed in the I air. I think they're saying ole. <laughs> oh, is that? But they're Jack not just the hats. Jack is trying to tell you, the Mexicans love these tacos. They're Come not out. just they're not hats. Wrong. They're sombreros. They're sombreros. <laughs> they're having a taco sale. You can get three of our delicious regular tacos. They're showing the tacos in 1976. They look exactly like the tacos do they now. They look just, For just 89. Like they're a little plumper than you actually 89 get. cents for three tacos? Sombreros. <laughs> or you can get two of our great big super tacos for just 99 <gasps> cents. Monster taco. But you better hurry. The sale ends September 26th. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. We suck again. Uh, so one final fact about Taco Bell tacos. <laughs> yeah. The they're, mini tacos are not the same recipe. They're oh. not? They're so different. the Jack of the Box regular size tacos are a lump of beef meat or okay. reconstituted beef. beef the mini meat. tacos are reconstituted chicken meat. Chicken meat. Yeah, the tiny tacos <gasps> have chicken. Uh, well, well they not sell really chicken, but oh. some kind of... A chicken-like beef meat. Be- Beef-flavored chicken. They're <laughs> like chicken. Yeah, probably. It probably tastes like anything else that goes in the same fryer. I would. You know what? Doesn't change my mind. Doesn't I change love your them. mind. 
Love hitting him. Jack in the Box on the way home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I'm getting yeah. kind of hungry yeah. for him. That's for sure. These are just some facts that, that I learned. It was a maze. Everyone should try to learn something new each day. It's time for the cash code. Uh, we're going to do this every hour uh, through 5 p.m. We do that every Monday through Friday as long as the cash code is going on. Uh, money talks, the Q cash codes pay. And just for entering the cash codes, uh, and Joanna will describe that process for you. But just by entering the cash codes, you got a chance to win. Well, every day we give 10 winners $100. So you could get your share of that, or you could even be the winner of the $30,000 grand prize. Yeah, let's hear this hour's cash code. Your cash code for this hour is 127. 127. Correct. All right. Now tell people what they're going to be looking at. Assume it's somebody who's never entered a cash code before, but they never, want to start. Yeah. You download that KLAQ mobile app. When you open it up, you will tap on the money bag icon labeled win cash and then scroll on down to put your code in in the appropriate hours. Also, make sure that when you sign up for the app that you have the correct phone number. Some people like to put fake numbers. No, no, no. That, but, but the phone a, number is how we get in touch with the phone um, number about is, your money. Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. Phone number is how we will let you know if you are a winner. So make sure you have a correct I number. I understand. I give out fake phone numbers all, all the, time. the time. My phone number is 555-5555. <laughs> and that's what you're going to do, yeah. More cash codes throughout the day, and then we'll do it all again tomorrow. Let's take a break. More of the Buzz Adams Morning Show is headed your way right after this. Hey, it's Chuck, your host for Loudwire Nights. Tonight at 7, we will rock the borderland with the best rock ever made and the best rock being made. Special guests, birthday and anniversary celebrations, and every night at 10... 21 and over. See for more info on El Paso's biggest Dallas Cowboys tailgate party with Jay Novacek. From the KLIQ studios in beautiful, sunny El Paso, Texas, this is the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Now we're jamming, jamming. 95.5 KLIQ El Paso, a town square media station. Kaplowitz. I'm a big, stupid jerk. Boy, 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 boy. We are joined today by broadcast legend, sports hall of famer, our colleague from across the hall, 600 ESPN El Paso, Steve Kaplowitz. Good morning, Cappy. And a friend of yours. Good morning, Uh, Great friend of mine. How are you? Very, very good. Now, the Miners aren't playing this weekend. They do play next Thursday, but somehow the Miners and especially the Mountain West Conference mm. are kind of the hot topic. Huge topic. Even though, the biggest... as far as I know, nobody's asked UTEP to join the Mountain West. So listen. Or to join, uh, what is it, Pac- the Pac-12 Pac- or, Pac- or the Mountain West. or the Mountain West. Yes, that's right. So here's what happened late last night, okay? Late last night, we found out Air Force and UNLV are now expected to remain in the Mountain West Conference. There there was rumors that UNLV was going to go to the PAC and Air Force was looking to go either to the PAC or the American Athletic Conference and leave the Mountain West, which could potentially crumble the Mountain West Conference. But now, apparently, these two schools, UNLV and Air Force, were incentivized to stay... They gave them significant financial packages. That's the deal. They're they're paying them. They basically said, we're going to give you a lot of money to stick around in the Mountain West. And if anybody's wondering why UTEP hasn't tried that, it's because probably they wouldn't pay them anything (laughs) to keep them around. That's exactly. So this was a big story that uh, broke, um, you know, again, late last night. It led us to post this poll. We'll pay you off not to leave our conference. Well, do you blame them? I mean, I would do the same thing, right? That's that's the yeah, way to go. So. How bad do you want? How bad do you want to stay? And according to Brett McMurphy from the uh, Action Network, he said that Air Force and UNLV are expected to each receive twenty-five to thirty million as a signing bonus to stay in the Mountain <laughs> West. So the Mountain West values those two teams big time. I'm just wondering. Are we, what are we, Conference USA? Still? Conference USA. Okay. But Conference USA, would Conference USA even offer like a half price discount 
coupon no, to the so. men's warehouse? No. <laughs> no. They wouldn't offer anything, would no. they? No. How no, no. You does... can't even get a water bottle from the Conference USA. What's up? <laughs> How many teams does the Mountain West uh, currently sit at then? Seven. Seven. And that, that includes Hawaii. That includes Hawaii for football mm. only. So really six. Were we six. ever in the same conference with UNLV ever? Yes. Yeah. We were in the WAC. The WAC. With UNLV. That's right. In fact, we've been in the WAC with almost everybody. Like, you look at this, you look at the way the Mountain West has turned into. All these schools are familiar at one point in time. So I put a, we put a poll up on the yeah. 600 ESPN El Paso Twitter and X account. And it said, where do you think the minors will be in 2025? 87 votes so far in the poll. 56% voted Mountain West, 28% voted Pac-12, 16% voted Conference USA. All right. So there's still time to vote. Um, look, here's the deal, guys, okay? The Mountain West and the Pac-12 both need schools to fill it up, okay? Mm -hmm. They both do. Mm -hmm. I mean, the but Pac from a fan's perspective, is, isn't it just like which conference do you want the minors to lose in? Well, no. I mean, it's like which. Con Let me ask you this, okay? As a minor fan, don't you think you would get more excited if you had teams that you were familiar with coming to play every year? It could bring the interest level back to where it's been. So let me give you well, an idea of where we are. USA, how how many years now? Twenty. Yeah, right. It's twenty, 20 years. So and no, people nobody are cares. Most familiar with and the nobody cares after twenty years. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. So the teams people want to see us play every year are NMSU, probably New Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, beyond yep. that, does anybody? Hey, when yep. we were playing UNLV, mm -hmm. would the minor fans from El Paso travel to Vegas for well, minor games? No, but I'll tell you where they would travel. When they played UNLV, the, the tournament was in Vegas, and a lot of minor fans mm -hmm. would go to Vegas for the tournament every year for basketball. That was a big, big deal. So, look, here's the way it shapes out right now, okay? The Mountain West is currently, you have San Jose State, that's one. UNLV, that's two. Hawaii for football, that's three. Nevada is four. Wyoming is five. Air Force is six. New Mexico is seven. Now, those are all schools that UTEP at one point in time played in the whack with. So, yes. BYU, if they go, I think a lot of people no, would BYU. like to see Close UTEP play BYU. BYU, big, BYU is in the Big 12. That's just not happening. I mean, that's not going to that's not gonna be a reality. But I would say that was always yeah. a highlight oh, whenever yeah. they visited. Oh, UTEP fans hated BYU. Hated. Oh, Worse than doubt. anybody else. The hatred for BYU uh -huh. goes back to the Danny Ainge days. That's right. That is right. <laughs> so now, now listen to this, okay? Here is what the pack looks like at this point in time, okay? The pack has Washington State, Oregon State, Fresno State, um, Boise State, Colorado State, San Diego State, and Utah State. Those are the seven schools in the pack. So here's my question to you, Buzz. Let's say the PAC wants UTEP and the Mountain West wants UTEP because they both <laughs> need UTEP to fill till they get to their quota. Imagine UTEP having two offers for a prom date. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's all of a sudden, it, it could be a possibility. So if you had a choice between the Mountain West or the PAC-12, which would you take? Mountain West, and I only say that because we're closer to a mountain than we are to the Pacific Ocean. There you go. That could be the case. That could be the case. I mean, I mean that's, that's how simple it is for me. School-wise, I mean, you could say, okay, what's a better league? You know, you have the, the, the two former Pac-12 schools along with Fresno the and Boise The looking and Colorado. for the worst league so they have a chance of winning some games. Listen... <laughs> I'll say this, though, from a, from someone who's been watching UTEP for 40-plus now, as I have. I think I've been watching UTEP now for 46 years. Um, they belong. They just don't belong. How can I say this in a very nice, polite way? They don't belong in Conference USA. They just don't. Like, Conference USA is... It's not a good fit for us. It's like the leftover conference. And, and think about this. As Conference USA has been trying... Because remember, a couple of years ago, they were on the verge of collapsing. And look what they did. They brought in schools that nobody would ever think about to be their their new schools. So what I'm talking about is is this, okay? Liberty, I get it. And Liberty's really good. Like Liberty's yeah. the best Liberty addition you could have. Right. Last year. But look what you brought in. Jacksonville State. Kennesaw State, Sam Houston State. You're on the verge now next year, Delaware and Missouri 
uh, a state are coming into the conference. So they're kind of expanding in the wrong, in like in a direction that's not relatable to UTEP, other than the Sam Houston yeah. State School that came, and New Mexico we're, State we're for like, that matter. We're like two thousand five hundred miles away from Mar- from Delaware. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and by the way, Liberty is in Virginia, uh, Lynchburg. Where so, is Sam Houston? Is it in Texas? Huntsville, but not in Houston. No, Huntsville, okay. Texas. Okay. So anyway, um, look. I think there is a there is a real chance, a real chance that UTEP and New Mexico State could both end up in the Mountain West well, when I, it's all said and you done. You know what? I think that's the the biggest issue is UTEP playing in MSU every year. Well, I agree. And they just became rivals for the first time in like 61 years, 62 years. So, you know, now you're like, okay, think about this. If UTEP, New Mexico, and New Mexico State are all division rivals, all that, or conference rivals, that's never happened before. Like, that's that would be something completely different. So, uh, and it's a very it's a very real possibility all right, right I want to ask you a question. Yes. I want to ask you, can you say with 100% certainty... That if the UTEP Miners currently mm-hmm. were to play the best high school football team in the country, that the Miners could win that game. Yes. Get, not even a question. Not, not even, even a question. The Miners would absolutely yes. run the best high school team yes. off, the, off the field. Because let me say this, okay, just so you understand this. UTEP, their team is filled with the best high school players from their teams on their roster. Like, they don't have players yeah, that were like every other the bottom of the... team has even well, better players. That's true, too. But you asked the question, can they beat the best... Of course they could beat the best high school team. That's like saying... I wouldn't bet oh, that's my like, life You know what? That's it. like asking, could the Texas Longhorns beat the Jacksonville Jaguars? Mm, I don't know. The Jags are pretty bad. <laughs> oh, my God. You see... Probably not this year. <laughs> well, but I'm just saying that that's that's the same kind of question I, I, you're honestly, asking. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, some of those high school kids oh, are pretty big, it. pretty fast. Stop it! Come on now. Uh, Buster is on the phone. Hey, Buster, you're on with Cappy. Yes, sir. How are y'all doing? Fantastic, hey, Buster. Buster. What's up? Listen, uh, in the event that UTEP gets a prom invite from <laughs> wherever. And go somewhere. What about the ugly stepsister, New Mexico State? Where are they going to well, go? Well, Steve just laid out how they might both potentially end up in the Mountain West. Yeah, I think right. that's Happy. the best. I think that's the best possibility right now, Buster. Is that you might see both going into um, the Mountain West Conference. So now I, I will say this: New Mexico State is not as dire as UTEP to get out. They just got into Conference USA. Like, New Mexico State was independent two years ago. So they're happy to be in a league that at least has a sense of stability, okay? UTEP, on the other hand, has been in this league for 20 years. Everybody knows the fans want out, and the school knows also that they would be in a better spot with all of their former whack um, members that are all now in the Mountain West. So the difference between UTEP and New Mexico State is just that the Aggies just got into a league. UTEP, for for a long years. time now, wants to get out of this league. All right. Okay. Thanks, Buster. Okay. Wait, wait, can I follow up? Real yep, quick. Real, real quick. quick. Real quick. If you're one of those teams in either of the conferences you just mentioned, the PAC or the Big 12 or what? Mountain, Mountain West. West. Mountain West. Mountain West. Mountain West. What what is the attraction of having UTEP join them? You want to know what the attraction is, Easing Buster? In. Here's the attraction. <laughs> you have no choice. You're in a mm-hmm. spot right now where you can't be picky. You can't suddenly look and say, boy, why wh- could we pick somebody besides UTEP? There's nobody else left, Buster. That's the problem right now if you're the Mountain West. They're running out of options. And UTEP can leave and be a member immediately and just join right in. And they know all of the schools that they used to play together because of the familiarity back in the whack days. It just makes the most sense. All right. Thanks, yeah, Buster. And, and like, like they say in Family Feud, Good answer, Steve. Good answer. <laughs> okay. All right. Appreciate it. Dallas. Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys.
Cowboys are playing tonight on Thursday Night Football. A Huge few ways game. you could see the game. You could uh, watch it if you have Amazon Prime. Mm. You could go to Speaking Rock, where Cappy's going to be later today. That's true. I'll be there at 4 o'clock today, hosting Sports Talk Live. And uh, Jay Novacek will be making an appearance today. The former Cowboy great and uh, one of our favorites from many, many years ago when we brought him in for our Sports and, mm. uh, and Health Expo. So Jay Novacek will be there tonight out at Speaking Rock to meet Cowboys fans and sign autographs and take pictures. Um, but the game will be on here with Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg. We'll also have the Westwood One feed for tonight's game on 600 ESPN. So you actually have oh, okay. two radio feeds to choose from to listen to the game tonight. All right. So uh, we're going to start our coverage at 5 o'clock with the pregame show. That's right. And uh, when the game wraps up, whenever whatever time that is, we'll go to Loudwire Nights already in progress. Do you guys run the postgame show? I don't know. Maybe part of it. <laughs> Maybe you run the, like the, the, the first 15, 20 minutes, and then it's like, okay, gone to it. what? Oh, hang on one second. That, yeah, I think we do. Yeah, I've okay. heard it on the radio before. Yeah, yeah I have too. Mm-hmm. We can't go too many hours without playing at least one song by Five Finger Death Punch. So, mm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I understand. We're contractually obligated. obligated to play a five finger death punch song. Uh, so the last week uh, and this week, they were ranking the best NFL teams. So mm. let's just run down the top five real quick. Obviously, number one is going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. Correct. Um, did you hear that a, a former ESPN, I think it was ESPN or NFL anchor, uh, said that Travis Kelsey isn't catches me passes because he spent the offseason partying too much with Taylor Swift. That is the stupidest Have you ever, thing. Did you hear that, though? No, that's so stupid. I forgot the name of the guy. But. Who would say that? Like, okay, let me just put this into perspective. There is no bigger partier in football than Rob Gronkowski, <laughs> and he never had an issue catching passes from Tom Brady, no matter how much he partied during the offseason. So that is that that is a ridiculous take. Well, I don't know how many, how many targets... Uh, Travis Kelsey is getting this season per game as compared to last season, but the you can't have, argue with the results. The here's Chiefs the deal. The <laughs> Chiefs, the let me say this. The Chiefs have more options for Patrick Mahomes to throw the football to this year than they've ever had before. And therefore, you don't have to rely on Kelsey as much as you've had in the past because they have such a deep team in terms of skill sets and skill talent. But the fact that you're trying to make the, the Kelsey part, that's such a stupid take. All right, last week they had the Buffalo Bills at number three. Buffalo Bills, uh, according to AP mm. uh, and USA Today, have have jumped up to number two. Yeah, Bills look really good. They, they've been, they've been, you know, they haven't played much, but they've really been uh, clicking on all cylinders early on. So, yeah. All right. Minnesota Vikings at number three last week. They were number seven. This is a fascinating take. Yeah, it is. Because the Vikings play the Packers in Lambeau this weekend, and that'll be Aaron Jones going home uh, after spending, you know, the first, what, seven years of his career in Green Bay. Um, listen, if the Vikings go into Lambeau and they beat the Packers, then and absolutely, I could see the argument that they're the third best team right now in the league. Uh, number four, Detroit Lions. That's got to feel good for the Lions. Put together a couple of good seasons here. Yeah, but they've already lost a game. So Eagles um, uh, coming in at number five. God, and this goes to that's show you. Too. This goes to show you that if that's yeah. the case, and you yeah. think the Eagles are the fifth best team right now in the NFL, that there's a lot of parity and there's not a lot of quality because the Eagles have struggled. They struggled against New Orleans. They've struggled to, and they lost on Monday night to Atlanta. A, I think parity is a good thing. It is a good thing. I agree. But do you really think right now that the Eagles are the fifth best team in the league? Uh, who am I to argue with AP mm. and USA Today, you know? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> and, and and the answer is they could very well be. Listen, must win for the Cowboys tonight. Would you agree? They cannot afford... If they lose... Yeah, be in a all right, so here's the question. Out of. Let, me, let me throw this to Cowboys fans out there listening to you right now. If they lose to the Giants tonight, do, does Jerry Jones fire Mike McCarthy in after season? the game? Mm. Yes. They'd after be one in, the game? They'd be one in three... <gasps> They would have just lost three in a row. You mean before the, the next game? Yes. Do you think they already have like a, a plan in place? If we fire this dude, here's what's going to happen. Well, I don't think they're bringing Bill Belichick in. If that's your <laughs> question, but um, I do I think, feel. I like, think Belichick would probably take it though, like, I mean, unless he's too smart to work for Jerry Jones. You could make Mike Zimmer 
the yeah. uh, interim head coach, since he's their defensive coordinator, you could put him up as head coach. He's had lots and lots of experience in Minnesota as head coach. But I'm just saying, Cowboy, I think Cowboys fans are getting so sick and tired of Mike McCarthy that if they lose today, and, and I know what Cowboy fans would love more than anything else, and they'd love, the, uh, they'd love Jerry Jones to fire himself. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So. All right. Uh, thanks, Cappy, for dropping by. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, you guys, Alberto said we got to take a break. Have you guys watched the uh, Vince McMahon documentary yet on Netflix? Nah. Do you know what he admitted to in, in this in this documentary? He a freak. He admitted to <laughs> he admitted to he a cons- freak. He admitted to a storyline where they wanted him to impregnate his own daughter. What? <gasps> No, <laughs> jail. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Think it was about just that. a storyline. It was he wasn't a, well, really yes. going to do it. It was a storyline, but he said it almost happened, where his daughter would have been pregnant, and he would have been Stephanie, the father. Then. Stephanie. That's right. And and he would have been the dad. Would they have got? Uh, would they have gotten more? Uh, oh God, uh, Maury. Maury. What would the hell was Mar- Mari Povich? Mari Povich. Would they get Mari in to tell him you're the you are the father? or Jerry Springer? Yeah. yeah. Either way, that would have been that would have been wild. But anyway, there's a, there's like a five or six part documentary on Vince McMahon that just dropped yesterday on Netflix. That's getting a ton of talk right now. All right, thanks, Cappy. All right, uh, I'll tell everybody about the dining deal when we come back in just a moment. Find out what's going on. Quirky facts about our region. Urgent things you need to know impacting your drive. And of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh, he wants to wear ugly. Visit the Good Feet Store. We can help you wear your heels, boots, and dress shoes again in comfort. Live from the KLAQ Studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Mm. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul, seal your doom tonight. We're trying to get in the Halloween spirit, everybody. Spooky. Because tomorrow... Both of our KLAQ Haunted Houses of Terror open. And uh, you can go through starting tomorrow. It's going to be open all the way through Halloween, including a couple of days into uh, November. Oh, that's cool. So I can can give you the addresses. Uh, You can check out any information you need at KLAQ.com, or you can open the KLAQ mobile app and get that same information. Uh, Desert Warriors Paintball is producing this year. That's their truck out front with the with the scary, I don't know, what is that, a monster or a zombie or a ghoul on the truck <laughs> out there? I don't so. know, but mm-hmm. it scares me every time. Uh, Desert Warriors <laughs> is one of the locations, 13900 Montana. But we also have the other haunted house of terror. It's going to open tomorrow, too, at 2155 Joe Battle, uh, both on the east side. And uh, Thursdays are going to be student discount night, Fridays and Saturdays have extended hours. We're open until midnight. And uh, Sundays, we're going to have the haunted house open 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. You can get the full schedule. Tickets are $25 per person and uh, opens tomorrow. So KLEQ Haunted Houses of Terror. Uh, so Nico doesn't like jump scares. He doesn't like haunted no. houses. I but I think we him. should go. As the morning show, we should scare him. Check it out. Uh, sure. I like I say, for years, I used to dress up, you know, I know. You like talk whatever about the that theme is, and scare people. I feel like you have fond memories It's of It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. A couple of stories here before we uh, wrap things up. Okay. All right. Uh, Were you guys talking doing? yesterday about the Oreo Coke? Yeah. I briefly mentioned that Gross. somebody said there's an Oreo Coke that's I've been on the one, shelves. I've been looking for it so that we could try it on air. Well, they just discontinued the Coca, the spicy Coca Cola, oh, and I good. never saw it was the, terrible. I never, since we're talking about sodas, I want to thank everybody who got me <laughs> caffeine-free Dr Pepper. But I, I just want to say I can't believe it. I just got How another many? one yesterday. You got another yeah. one. So people have been sending these in. I know where they got them. Amazon, and I'm going to beg you not to do it because do the it price anymore. is like thirty five dollars for a twelve pack. It's way too much. It is a lot. Also, I think these might have been pre COVID Dr <gasps> Peppers because well, it just tastes a little off. It's caffeine free. Caffeine free doesn't affect the taste. Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> it's not diet. It's not sugar free. It's just like a Dr Pepper. The only thing missing is the caffeine. Uh-huh. But I think they discontinued them, 
even though the lady in Plano at Dr. Pepper headquarters <laughs> swore you. that they they didn't, <laughs> but they taste just a little a little old and a tiny bit flat. Oh, no. So I appreciate unreservedly appreciate everybody you, that was everyone. so nice to do that. Somebody also brought and me in the brownies, dr- and I'm drinking them. I'm definitely drinking them. I ate Somebody the brownies. Brought you the brownies, but they the wrong <laughs> the wrong cosmic one. brownies. Yeah. You can find the Cosmic Brownies. It's yeah. the walnut. It's the one with walnuts that you can't find anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the Bridgerton bust in Detroit? <laughs> I know you did you it. You mean Scammerton? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? They're saying it as bad as the Willy Wonka experience they are was. comparing it to the Willy Wonka experience in Scotland. This one was in Detroit, and partygoers were promised an immersive Bridgerton experience where they will also give a cash prize of $2,000 for the diamond of the season, which is a term they use in the show, but it was really for the best dressed attendee. When they got there, it was a sad display. There weren't chairs, enough chairs for everybody. There was one stripper, one violin player. Wait, are there strippers on the show Bridgerton? So there was one episode where they had like an exotic dancer as an art entertainment piece. So it was like a new... On the, on the show. On the show. It was supposed to be edgy. They weren't really stripping, but they were getting down to their skivvies. Well, well, it's and supposed it to be supposed in the 1820s, right? Yeah, so it was supposed to be it kind of like It takes a, them an hour to get out all the underwear that they has, used to have to wear in does, those days. yeah. That is a strip. That puts the tees in strip <laughs> tees. And so people were upset because... Tickets cost about a one hundred and fifty dollars to a thousand dollars based on the packages that they were purchasing. And when they got there, it was just this really sad event. But all the attendees looked like they were really hyped up. They dressed up to the nines. The attendees looked like they did. They did their part. Yeah. They were. They dressed up. They looked like out of Bridgerton. But they first of all, they didn't have the two thousand dollar prize. There was no prize. There was no there alcohol. There was no alcohol, which they were led to believe. Some of these mm-hmm. people bought VIP packages yep. in the hundreds. Uh, close to a thousand dollars, some yep. of them. And it was just a sad event all with right. nothing nothing to show. Well, let's see. <laughs> uh looks like the people in Detroit that went were excited. They were so excited. Oh, Tickets this, could go as much as $1,000 per ticket. So this wasn't the first time that this event had already let down their patrons. The event was supposed to be scheduled sometime in late August. But like the day before, they sent an email to the people who bought tickets. And they were like, we have to postpone this the event. The day before. Like the day before. I think. I mean, I'm sure they wish the people wish they'd just asked for their money back. Right. At that point. Scammerton. Scammerton. <laughs> the, the fire fest of Bridgerton. It's <laughs> another thing that they're The saying. fire fest of the ton. Right. Uh, I binge watched all of that show in like a week. Oh my goodness. How many seasons? There's three. Is it good or is it just salacious? <sighs> it's salacious very right. much, yeah. I don't know if it happened or not, but what? <laughs> let me tell y'all what did happen. What did happen? Okay, so like I said, we paid for VIP. This was <gasps> VIP, and they were not checking anybody in. There was no one sitting at the table. Right, so you paid extra, and they just let anybody they into the They were just letting anybody in. Okay. Well, when we walked in, so we just kind of walked in and sat ourselves. Um, they were handing out bottles of water because there was no bar or nowhere to drink down there. And they had one table of food. Now, we were told there was no food in the back, but like, I don't know how true that is. And that- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like a sad luncheon that they did not put a lot of money no. into. It it looks like a, you know, a the- room at a convention center at right. best. The organizers have come out and they're like, well, we don't know how it happened, but we are working diligently to fix it. Fix well, this. Yeah, I, bet. I, bet. I mean, get people like, their money like, back is yeah. what it sounds like. I don't know how true that is. And that was just the first floor because the rest of the floors, it just gets worse. Okay. <gasps> there was more than one floor. I think the, a lot of these people would just love to have their money back. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, even that's not fair because you wasted a night of their a time. A night out. They probably wasted Got a lot of money sitter, on their, maybe. Yeah. their outfits and stuff. Money. Got them excited. <laughs> Scammerton. Disappointed. Scammerton. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap things up. Big Friday show tomorrow. All right. And then next week, we got a lot of guests. Oh, I'm I saw excited. that Eric Roberts got postponed, though. Oh, it did? I just saw that. I just yeah. saw who else we're interviewing. Who else are we interviewing? Ooh. 
That guy yeah. from How I Met Your Mother. Oh, Josh Ratner. Oh, Josh from, Ratner. Yeah, I set that up yesterday. <laughs> you did. And Nico was like, uh, Joanna is going to tear him a new one. No, I'm not. <laughs> it, because you didn't like the way they ended. Oh my god, I hated How I that ending. Brother. Well, so I can't, it's not primarily Josh. Uh, I know. Rabner's but fault. I can't even rewatch How I Met Your Mother because I get so mad over how it ended. Mm -hmm. They just ruined it for you. It huh? ruined it. Yeah. I, I hear you. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap things up. Alberto, thanks for filling in you, for a few hours. Appreciate that. Appreciate Stephanie Valle for coming in mm -hmm. from ABC7. You can check out her newest Borderland Crimes podcast. You can find it at KVIA or wherever you get your podcast. Just look for Borderland Crimes. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. So long, everybody. You know what I think? I think you talk too much. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, man, we're done.